Those who have an ear, let him hear what the spirit says. And if you're not listening, then you need to get out the way. No time to be around them folks that's scared to go through it. We're called to put in work for God. You better believe we gon' do it. I'm about being loyal to the one that created me. Trying to tear down the kingdom of the one that be hating me. So I listen when the spirit says to refrain from sin. I mean, he sacrificed his life for me. So yeah, I'm all in. I'm operating under the spirit of God. Not at the minimum. Glorifying him with my talents. I got like 10 of them. No seeds falling on the rock. No thorns of the wayside, they falling on good ground, making them demons get terrified. I'm spiritually certified, my life has been modified. The devil no longer has his hands on me, he's disqualified. I'm so down to the end, won't take the mark of the beast. I'd be a fool to walk away from the one that brings so much peace. My prayer life will not cease, I'm constantly on my knees. My desire to cater to my flesh is also decreased. When it comes to serving God, you better know I'm not playing because I have an ear and I hear what the spirit is saying. Those who have an ear, let him hear what the spirit says. And if you're not listening then you need to get out the way no time to be around them folks that's scared to go through it we're called to put in work for god you better believe we're gonna do it god live in my spirit so i hear him loud and clear i'm just one of his sheep i keep his doctrine in my ear the world stay telling lies selling corruption and fear but see it pay to speak the truth so i always volunteer and i'm loving it because i accepted the lord's covenant his policy is better than the government you're running with all day i'll talk about him like i'm sister sister stuttering but some old listen like they're hey, this buffering my flesh was fiending from what my demons kept bringing now i'm truly believing i stopped being the heathen sinning and not repenting that's a clear sign the spirit is missing i baptized with rise my holy is dripping i'm blessed because i'm humble he gave me grace for my troubles when i get with two more he hear my prayers won't be huddled so i listen to dr premonition i get a quick in in my spirit every time he pay a visit those who have an ear, let him hear what the spirit says. And if you're not listening, then you need to get out the way. No time to be around them folks that's scared to go through it. We're called to put in work for God. You better believe we gon' do it. Let's get it. You won't see me in the lobby. Everywhere I go, I keep the spirit on me. Yeah, white on, got me feeling godly. I protect what's in my spirit and my body. Lord, keep your light shining on me. Will I follow you? Guess it's on me. Will I follow you? Guess it's on me. All on me, it's all on me. Ay, will I follow you? Guess it's on me. It's all on me. Ay, will I follow you? Guess it's on me. In the light, in the dark, no, you dead, 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 dead. No, Remember what you all back yeah, 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 yeah. I know that you care, 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 care Ay, I know that you care for me I know you know me, won't leave me lonely I will never dare to leave Came a long way from my heart on my sleeve From the top of my head to the sole of my feet Yeah, I know who I am, yeah, I know who I be Better than understand, I'm starting to see Only you can provide that missing piece Love on swallow, even when I don't feel Got to love, oh, oh You the light on the hill, let it glow, oh, oh Show me what's real, really, I don't know, oh, oh See me in the lobby Everywhere I go, I keep the spirit on me, yeah White on, got me feeling godly And protect what's in my spirit and my body Lord, keep your light shining on me Will I follow you, guess it's 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 on me when the night calling, new day start, a new day tomorrow. Shot calling, know we gon' prosper. How I know, cause I said to talk with my father. Ooh, they gotta go on with that pick. Brand new, we do ain't a pack. Brand new, the king, we ain't never gon' let. On this bit, facts on facts on facts on facts on facts on facts. I'ma never leave like brand new tax. It's going down like a cutie sad. You won't see me in the lobby. Everywhere I go, I keep the spirit on me. Yeah, white on, got me feeling godly. I can reach up, but my spirit and my body. Lord, keep your light shining on me. Will I follow you? Guess it's 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 on me. Even though I'm not perfect, you still show me that I'm worth it. You heal me up when I'm hurting. It's easy at one, two, three. Patiently, so long you waited for me. One, two, three. Patiently. So long you ain't. You won't see me in the lobby. 
Everywhere I go, I keep the spirit on me. Yeah, white on, got me feeling godly. I'm about to tell you something. my spirit and my body. Lord, keep your light shining on me. It's this, it's this, um, it's this young, this is young guy on um, social media, right? He, um, don't believe God exists. So he's been, he's on a, a mutual friend of our pages. It was a video of this. Hate it on by me. Yeah, um, Only love by a few. So his his love. belief he don't believe Platted God on exists, by a scene. But the favor her got on me God too. Exists. So I'm asking him questions. Since, Hate it on by me. Only love by a few. You should be able to answer questions on um. Love. Why um, I don't buy Satan, certain things come about? Me so I'm asking him these questions. If you don't, if you got to be ready to defend why you don't believe it exists. I'm just a you you got to explain to me um, just to get you for gains. Some people genuine about what you they know, say. There's no the difference. How, how, how everything break. came about? He was like, he was like, um, he said something about. Uh, he said the, the, the Bible is not accurate. Um, it's not an accurate representation of the God exists. So I said, okay, so I said, okay, so what do you have? Accurate representation of the God exists. So I said, okay, so what do you have? To compare the Bible to the proof is accurate. Christ, he will carry you far. Jesus was hated. That's gonna, that question right there gonna trump your whole argument. Hey, Mary. Don't break your neck for no haters. So he come back with reality. <laughs> like, dude, how did reality come about? I'm trying to get the answer. Serious about my business, I'm equipped. Ripping with ease as I flow like a breeze. I blow like a sneeze. Can roll on no breeze. If they ever had a problem with me, I would hope that they would let me know. Instead of talking trash behind my back, let's consult a nice and grony dopes. Or I would snap like a yeah. gator. Serving you. So I'm like, you're gonna, like if, you, if you're gonna, if you're gonna have that belief, then you should Running be able to explain that. Later. Faker. Hated on by many. Only loved by a few. And he can't answer it. <laughs> They keep going around it. These people Platinum love to like let somebody convince them that something don't exist, so they take off what they what somebody's taught them. So if you believe, then you should be able to answer it. You know what I mean? You should be able to explain what, what your beliefs. If you believe in a, a big bang theory, whatever, you should be able to explain it, not come back with we don't know. Don't put, don't say we. You don't know. Look, yeah. it's kind of crazy when that you helped out with biting the hand that I'm, it's funny I'm just the chat with him though because sure he keep me. digging a hole for himself he keep making all this stuff but he, he go around to ask a question so that's what I'm, I'm still chatting with him and talking about all this Bible stuff for me. so when you really want to start hating let me tell you about my savior turn water and wine gave sight and I was going to walk away from him but it's just something that's in me just like no because it's, it's it's not like we're having some bad conversation he's really trying to get convinced that God exists he's not mean he's not being out of line, he's not trashing God, he's not saying anything bad. I'm gonna make you hate a sick. He just wanna be convinced. But I'm not I'm not gonna answer. He wanna know, he wanna know, he wanna respond. So I'm not gonna explain to you how God exists if you don't believe God exists. So I wanna know. See what I'm trying to do with him is I wanna know how did he feel like everything come about and I'm gonna he gonna explain God exists on his own just by answering my question. But I think he knows I think he may know that. That's why he won't answer the question. <laughs> like I'm not gonna explain nothing to you. You don't believe God is this. So if I take the spiritual way on why God is this, you're not gonna believe it. So if you want if you're saying God don't exist, then you have to explain how everything came about. I don't know who it is, but I don't even know what he looked like. I just know his name is Cody. Love. don't buy Satan. But the favor hung out on me too. Yeah. I don't know what he look like. I ain't even. Hey, Bree Bree. So, yeah, I'm just waiting on him. It's, it's funny, though, just listening to him. Just, yeah. But I'm trying to, but that's the, that's the purpose of me chatting with him, because he's, he's going to tell me God exists without believing God exists by my questions. So that's why I'm answering, asking him these questions. I think, like I said, I think he realized it. That's why he's avoiding them. He didn't say nothing about he believed in a Big Bang Theory, anything. He just feels like the universe basically just created itself. So I said, so the universe has created a human being so precise that they have a brain. A thought. I mean, a thought process. Heart, lungs, a mouth to speak. It, the universe just created all this on its own. Hey. 
We don't know how it came out. I said, don't say we. You don't know. Don't include me. So he won't answer those questions. He, he, he want to use physics and chemistry. <laughs> Like who create? How did physics and chemistry come about? If they the one create, if they the, if physics and chemistry is the one that created this, like he just keep digging a deeper hole in himself. But he must not know who I am. A demon ain't nothing to me. And I pray for all my it's enemies. Dead. Like she, I was up in bondage. Now I'm free. Hey, yeah, so yeah. he's fine. God came and saved me like Captain America. Left with the devil hysterical. When they come to demons, I spare them. When they come to demons, I spare them. God came to save me like Captain America. Left with the devil hysterical. When they come to demons, I spare them. When they come to demons, I spare them. Uh. You know the Bible, I read it, I pray to my father, I do it in secret When I say I love him, I truly do mean it I don't dip in the world, I ain't putting my feet in Ain't no double dipping, trusting it, man, boy, you really tripping Got my itch to his mouth, so I really listen I'm a P31, do not get it twisted, uh Can't make a move, he don't tell me to go I'm really a vessel, I'm knowing my role His will is the best for me, trust me, I know Riding for Christ, I ain't losing my soul I'm giving God the glory So, um, you know, I try to stick with, you know, three chapters You know, we're doing 13 to 15 today it's gonna be kind of. It's not gonna be um, long. It's not, you know, really much to explain. Most of the chapter is self-explanatory. Say like this song, wanna this Taja. And listen to Taja. When they come to demons, I spare them. Yeah. So if we finish in a um. Short period of time, we can have a Bible talk. Questions y'all maybe you know need answers to or whatever. We can just chat from there. So it may be short, may not. It just depends on how the conversation goes. But um, try not to overdo it because I have to do you know a lot of studying and stuff. So I'm trying not to over you know exert myself. You know, at first I was that's what I was doing. So. So to me, when we have a short Bible study, it helps family, me let's encourage instead of each other. Give time them up in your prayers. Help them out. That's your brother. No more tearing her down. Hug her tight. That's your sister. Let's cut out the division and tell the devil get missing. Keep going. We are family. Open up them eyelids. Wake up. And let's stop treating each other like we are Satan's kids. We're helping him build his kingdom while tearing down our fathers. We'd rather argue when our brother is a problem solver. So many people are lost and dying in their sin. Cause we ignoring the very thing we need to My week going well, Bri. How about yours, love? I started to text you today. And I got sidetracked. And then I just woke up from the nap, so. Make apologies to the one to get refreshed. Replace that pride with the whole armor and let's yeah, get to work. And when you dress, meet me out on the battlefield. Let's show Satan our families united. And don't forget the shield. Let's make ourselves don't like a city sitting on a hill. Sending talk, letting the devil know that we are for real. All right. We're getting ready to start this day. This Bible study. Let me see. Listen to this now. A uh, little relaxation music. So you've been waiting all week for this? Awesome. Yeah, hear that music. I don't even realize how loud I be having it sometimes. Awesome. Bree, Bree. Alright. Yeah, I love that it's peaceful. I love I love that peaceful music. I had um seen one of the guys that comes in here. Brenville, he always come in and do a little visit, a little peep in and say hey to me. His, he has music in his background. I was like, oh, this is so relaxing. I never thought about doing that. So I decided to do the same thing. Brenville, be, he be putting me down on stuff. <laughs> so I like him. But anyway, let's pray.
Lord, we thank you. We honor you. We glorify your name for everything that you have done for us, everything that you have given us, how you lift our heads up this morning, how you provided us with food and roof over our head in these hard times. And Lord God, we just pray for those who don't have the same things that you have provided for us. We ask, Lord God, first that they seek your face, first that someone lead them to you. In the name of Jesus, we ask, Lord God, that you change their hearts, Lord God, because we know that it is not of your will that we should not have the basic um, things like roof over our head, like food in our bellies, clothes on our back in these cold times. So we ask, Lord God, that you show yourself in those people. I know, Lord God, that their salvation is the first priority. So we ask, Lord God, that you change their hearts to desire you. And when they desire you, we know that you're going to make provision. And Father God, we just pray for a great Bible study on today, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that you use me to do work in your kingdom. We pray, Lord God, that people today get understanding of your word and that they will desire more and more of your word each day. We ask, Lord God, that you open each person's hearts to understanding, Lord God. And that no one will resist the truth. We ask, Lord God, that they always seek you for confirmation, Lord God. Because we know that you enjoy the time that we spend with you. We know, Lord God, that you look forward to the time that we spend with you, Lord God. So we thank you for this word. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to get together, to give us something to add to our prayer list. Because we know that the more we pray, the more we seek your face, the closer that we get to you. So we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing each person to assemble together every week, Lord. We thank you for everybody to desire to assemble together every week. We see the hunger in everyone's um, hearts, Lord God, and we just thank you for it. We thank you, Lord God, that we choose you instead of the ways of the world. We thank you, Lord God, that we choose wisdom instead of being lost. So we ask, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, again. And we give you all the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Acts 13. Now, Acts 13, now this chapter um, basically makes a turning point. Remember, I told you guys that um, Peter, when we, the last chapter we read with, with Peter was 12. Well, he does show up in 15, like I said before, but Acts 13 starts Paul ministry. It's no more Peter and him, it's Paul um, all, the, um, all the way out. And Acts, so that's what I mean by this doing a turning point. The first 12 chapters was focused on Peter. The remaining chapters revolved around Paul and his ministry. Um, the, and the emphasis is the Jewish church. So um, they're in Jerusalem. You know, the church is in Jerusalem and Judea. And with Paul, um, with Paul, even though he's in the Jewish church, he's also focusing on spreading the word to the Gentiles. So this is this, um, the rest of this Bible is about Paul. And like I said, Peter shows up one more time, but that's it. So that's the turning turning point that it does. So let's read. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, a lifelong friend of Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping in the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. Now, we, um, in the beginning, it says that they were, um, on, in two, it says, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting. Now, this the way the, the word worshiping is using, is using here, it's not talking about like, you know, singing and worshiping. He's talking about a priestly service. What, you know, what priests do. That's what, you know, that's what, it, I, what he's talking about on worshiping. And of course, they was fat. They were praying. You know, a lot of times we see fasting and praying 
Fasting is just, you know, like I said, getting rid of your food to do a more intense prayer. Fasting is prayer. It's just that it's so intense that you're not, you're putting your food away for it. That's what it is. It's like, right now, nothing is important right now but this prayer. That's an intense prayer. And so that's what, that's what fasting is. So let's keep reading. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Lucia, to Seleucia. And from there, they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had John to assist them. When they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they came upon a certain magician, a Jewish false, false prophet named Bar-Jesus. He was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, a man of intelligence, who summoned Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Elements, the magician, for that is the meaning of his name, opposed them, seeking to turn the proconsul pro pro away from the faith. But Saul, who also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, You son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, full of all deceit and villainy, will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind and unable to see the sun for a time. Immediately mist and darkness fell upon him, and he went about seeking people to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed. When he saw what had occurred, for he was astonished at the teaching of the Lord. See, there's some signs and wonders I'm talking about. And these people um, back then wouldn't understand, um, wouldn't believe in Christ until they saw some type of signs and wonders. Now, Elimas, the magician, Elimas is the Greek name of Bar Jesus, just like it said in the scripture. Um, and it's a transliteration of the Arabic word magician. Now, back then, at one time, magicians wasn't wasn't doing anything evil. Now, magicians do a lot of is 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 revolve around evil. And um, hey, Tagadio, and so um, and in this case, this uh, magician boy Jesus was was evil, and so um, you know, of course, Paul had to put a stop to it because he was there influencing other people and. You know, we have to contend for the faith. We have to fight for the faith. So his way of fighting for the faith is, you know, having faith enough to, um, to, you know, basically ask God to blind him so he couldn't uh, distort the people who God called to have an ear for the word and to receive salvation. Because if he had not done that, then their proconsul would have never came to salvation. So... God is amazing as always. God always have a plan for someone's life. And that's um, what he did. Now let's keep reading. <clears throat> now Paul and his companions set sail from Paphos and came to Persia and Pamphylia. And, and John left them and returned to Jerusalem. But they went on from Perga and came to Antioch and Pisidia. And on the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down. After the reading from the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent the message to them, saying, Brothers, if you have any word of encouragement for the people, say it. So Paul stood up and motioning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and you who fear God, listen. The God of this people, the God of this people, Israel, chose our fathers and made the people great during their stay in the land of Egypt. And with uplifted arm, he led them out of it. And for about 40 years, he put up with them in the, in the wilderness. And after destroying seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance. All this took about 450 years. And after that, he gave them judges until Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king. And God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king, of whom he testified and said, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart who would do all my will. Of this man's offspring, God has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus, as he promised. Before his coming, John had proclaimed a baptism, baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing this course, he said, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. No, 
but behold, after me, one is coming, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to untie. Brothers, son of the family of Abraham, and those among you who fear God to us has been sent the message of this salvation. For those who live in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they did not recognize him, nor understand the utterances of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, fulfilled them by condemning him. And though they found in him no guilt worthy of death, they asked Pilate to, to have him ex executed. And when they had carried out all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he appeared to those who had come up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are now his witness to the people. And we bring you the good news that what God promised to the fathers, this is this he has fulfilled to us, their children, by raising Jesus. As also it is written in the second song, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And it's the fact that he raised him from the dead no more to return to corruption, he has spoken in this way. I will give you the holy and sure blessings of David. Therefore, he says also in another song, You will not let your holy one see corruption. I'm, I'm going to start right here. Alright, so, of course he said men of Israel. In the beginning, when he started talking to them, he did the same thing that Stephen did. He had to give them, he had to give them the understanding. Hey, Loki, give them the understanding of the Old Testament. Why? Because that was all that they had. And so many people have read this um, um, Old Testament, have been sticking by, but they never understood it. So he had to do the same thing that Stephen did and break down um, the Old Testament to them, so they can see why everything went down the way that it did. So, like I said, when he said men of Israel and who fear God, see, this is another indication that you're supposed to speak to people who seek God, those who have an ear. Um, would they say those who have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches? So those who have an ear, you have to, um, those are the ones you speak to. Those are the ones you share this to. If they want to hear it, that's why they ask them. You know, if you have any word of encouragement for the people, say it. So that these people want, they got an ear, they want to hear it. So then this is the perfect opportunity to really explain to them the Testament, um, what the Bible means. Now in, in 19, in verse 19, he said, After destroying the seven nations in the land of Canaan. Now the seven nations, you will see this in Deuteronomy 7 and 1. The seven nations controlled the areas of the land, um, usually um, around one or more of the fortified cities. So they had a greater population and military strength, um, and that would mean they made them stronger than Israel. But of course, those seven nations got taken down, you know, because you may be stronger than Israel, but you're not stronger than God. So if you want to know who the seven nations are, go to Deuteronomy 7 and 1. So in 1322, he said, and he had removed him, and he raised up David to be the king of whom he had testified and said, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who would do as my will. Now, you know, most people would be like, ain't no way in the world David was after God's own heart, all they're seeing, he was laying down. But a person that's after um, God's own heart is not perfect. But what makes them perfect in God's eyes, because they recognize their sin, and then they come to repentance. That's what makes you perfect in God's eyes. That's what makes you a God and somebody out of God's own heart. Because you know that you are in the flesh. You know that sometimes you mess up. But if you, if God fears you, if you're at the God's own heart, you don't want to um, not please God, then you repent for it. You know, you ask God to forgive and you ask God to, to change that in you. Because that's what you do when you're at the God's own heart. You don't harbor stuff. You don't just stay in your sin and be like, you know, it's all good, you know, because I'm at the God's own heart. That ain't somebody that's after God's own heart. This is why God forgives us so many times because he knows that we're in the flesh, but he knows we're after his heart. When we stay in that world and we read, and as soon as we mess up, just like somebody slip up, and oh, God forgive me, that's somebody that's after God's own heart. You should feel conviction, you should feel hurt, you should feel remorse, you should feel bad. Every time you do something against God. And when you do something against God's people, you're doing something against God and that should bother you. So David was after God's own heart. Was he perfect? No. But he repented. He always went to God for forgiveness. He always went to God for mercy. And he didn't, he never repeated the same sin. He learned, he'd be learning his lesson. And then he'll do something else to because he's human, you know? 
get it all out of the little system. <laughs> I guess is what he was doing. All right, so in 23, he says, of the man's offspring, God has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus, as the promise. Because we know God promised. This is, a, this is an Old Testament. This Old Testament prophecy points to the Messiah as a descendant of David. So this is why he's talking about David. Um, off his offspring, God has raised, um, has brought Israel a savior off the off Jesse, the stump from Jesse, because you know David, Jesse is um, David's father. So he said God always promised that Jesus was going to come from the line of David. He was going to be a descendant of David, and that promise came to pass. Verse 24. All right, let's keep reading. So for David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was laid with his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised up did not see corruption. Let it be known to you, therefore, brothers, that through this, through this man forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. And by him everyone who believes is freed from everything from which you could not be freed by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest what is said in the prophets should come about. Look, you scoffers, be astounded and perish, for I am doing a work in your days, a work that you will not believe, even if one tells it to you. As they went out, the people begged that these things might be told to them the next Sabbath. And after the meeting of the synagogue broke up, many Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who, as they spoke with them, urged them to continue in the grace of God. The next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and began to contradict what was spoken by Paul, reveling him. And Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying it was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first. Since you thrust it aside and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life, behold, we are, ret we are turning to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord. And as many as were appointed to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was spreading throughout the whole region. But the Jews incited the devout women of high standing and the leading men of the city stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and drove them out of their district. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. So this is this is how we are today, you know. When you hear um, the word of God and you get an understanding of it, especially when you're when you know when you're seeking God, because keep in mind God is the one that puts it in your heart to seek Him. But when you get an understanding of something, you get hungry. You know, like Todd's already doing, get greedy. You want more. You want more. So when they got that understanding, they was like, "Oh, you need to come back. You need to. You need. We want to hear more the next Sabbath, because you know." Sabbath is when they always had to basically had church in the temple. And so when he came back that and following Sabbath, they had a whole bunch of people there to hear it. Everybody wanted to hear it. And see, this is what God does when you're seeking him. When he puts in your heart and when you get that true understanding, you'll just be like, I want more. I want more. I want more. You know, and that's what they was on. They wanted more. They heard the truth. They When you get an understanding, you when you get it, you're like, okay, now, yeah, I want to get saved. Yeah, I want to get saved. I want, I want, I want to, I want to give you know my whole heart to God. You know, and see the thing is that God, He said when um, what the Paul said, and Paul and Barnabas spoke boldly, saying it was necessary for the word of God be spoken first to you, because remember, Jerusalem, you know the Jews, um, He off God offered um salvation to them first, but it was always God's plan. To offer salvation to everyone, he offered it to the um to his people to Israel first because he needed them to be um in line so he can they can be the light to the Gentiles. It was always God's plan to offer it to everybody, and so um so this is what Paul was telling him. So and that's why Paul most of Paul's ministry he he the thing about it is because Paul is a Jew. So, of course, he wanted to continue with giving, um, was speaking the gospel to them first. He knew that his um, ministry was mainly for the Gentiles, but he still desired the Jews to be saved. So, he, he, always, he still spoke to them first, and then he turned to the Gentiles. So, he still was performing God's um, task. He just wanted the Jews to be saved, too. So, he was there, you know, for the Jews and the Gentiles. 
and um and to let them know that God did not create salvation to be exclusively to the Jews. It was always meant to be for everybody. He just made it exclusive to the Jews so those Jews can minister the word of God to the Gentiles. And so um the scripture that he quoted in um 47 he was quoting from Isaiah 49 and 6. Um, we talked about this um, last Bible study. And so, um, 40 says, When the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and going find the word of the Lord. Of course. But one of the things he said, And as many as were appointed to eternal life believed. See, this scripture is another, it is so clear. This is another indication that God chooses men for salvation, not man choosing salvation for themselves. This is another scripture that proves that. And as many as were appointed to eternal life believed. You see? They believed. The reason why? Because God appointed them to. You know, in order for you to believe, you got to hear the word. This is why they were so excited about it. Because God already put in their heart to receive it. He already chose him. So now it's like, oh, yes, this is some good stuff. Y'all coming back next week to teach us the word. You know, they was hungry. And that's what we are. That's what happens when we when we come to salvation. We hunger and thirst after the Lord. We just seek him. And he says if you seek him, you, you'll find him. You know, we just that's, that's the mindset we're on. That's what our mind is always on. He so said that's when you got excited. Oh, I got excited. That's when I got excited. When I learned the word of God, when... When, when the Holy Spirit started revealing the word of God to me, I was in this word so much. I told y'all in the beginning, I said I, I, I was cheating on my husband with God. You know, because when it started coming clearly, when it just when the scriptures just bounce out, <gasps> like, that's what it, that's what it meant the whole time. You just be like, in, okay, I'm about to study. I'm going to keep going. You, you, you know, it's nonstop. Then you start really start studying and show yourself approved by God. It's just you just get so hungry to the point you just get greedy. You just want to keep learning this word because you're learning something that you didn't notice in the beginning you know the Holy Spirit just revealing it to you so it makes you hungry for the word and the reason and why why did God make you hungry for the word because he said blessed are those that hunger and thirst at the righteousness for they should be filled so he wants to fill us he wants to bless us he wants us to hunger for him so he can bless us but he puts it in our heart to do so and so, um, so you know, when we look at things like this, you know, you got to be forever grateful. All right, so let's keep it moving to 14. Yeah, it does, don't it, Wanda? Now, at, at Iconium, they entered together into the Jewish synagogue and spoke in such a way that a great number of both Jews and Greeks believed. But the unbelievers, the unbelieving Jews, stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their mind against the brothers. So they remained for a long time, speaking boldly for the Lord, who bore witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews and some with the apostles. When an attempt was made by both Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to mistreat them and to stone them, they learned of it and fled to Lystra and Der Derby's um, cities of Laconia and to the surrounding country. And they were... Um, and they, they continue to preach the gospel. All right, let me see. Now, um, when he said, now at the Iconium, they... This dog, my husband about to leave. All right, so it says in 5, when an attempt was made by both Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to mistreat them and to stone them. Now Paul and them of their ministry in the world and not calling them. So now we got a now we got a beef between the Jews and the, with the Jews and the Gentiles. Um, some was like I said, some was siding with the Jews, some was siding with the apostles. Now we're not saying Paul was the only apostle of Christ, but um, uh, Barnabas was considered an apostle of the church, not an apostle of Christ. So um, when he said stone them, it was obviously that it was the Jews. That was instigating this because that was a Jew, the Jewish custom for stoning. Remember, they stoned people for, uh, you know, blasphemy. That was their, that was their form of execution. So because that we know, hey Carmen, um, that it was uh, 
the Jews that was instigating this whole thing. And so, and so, um, of course, you know, they continue to preach the gospel, preach the okay, now to stop you from preaching the gospel. So now, let's keep reading. Now, at Lystra, there was a man sitting who could not use his feet, was crippled from birth, and had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, and Paul would look intently at him, looking intently at him, and seeing that he had faith to be made well, say, said in a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And he sprang up and began walking. And when the crowd saw that Paul had what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in Laconium, The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Now he's talking, they saying the gods with the little g. Barnabas, they called Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, who temp who whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates and wanted to offer sacrifice with the crowds. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out into the crowd, crying out, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men of light of light nature with you. And we bring you good news that you should turn from these vain things to the living God, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways, yet he did not leave himself without witness, for he did good by giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. Even with these words, they um, scarcely restrained the people from offering sacrifice to them. Now, to give you guys an understanding right here, when it starts at, um, when they, when they call it, when they said the gods have come down on us likeness of men. Now, this was a strange reaction, and at first, Paul and them, Paul and Barnabas really didn't understand what they was doing. So, this was a strange reaction, but this was derived from man's tradition. Now, the gods, Zeus and Hermes, they, they visited Israel, and they did it incognito, you know? And they used to always ask for food and lodging. And so they used to turn them away. All of them turned them away except for their peasant named Philemon and his wife. Now the gods they're talking about took vengeance on the people that turned them away by drowning them but with a flood in a flood. And so but they turned the cottage that Philemon and his wife were living in into a temple um, to show their appreciation. So the, and, and because of that, um, Philemon and his wife served as a priest and a priestess. So them not wanting to, to um, make that same mistake as their ancestors did, because you know what happened when they made that mistake with those gods, he flooded them. They didn't want to make that same mistake. So when Paul and um, Barnabas came, they assumed that they were Zeus and Hermes. Because remember, Zeus and Hermes used to come incognito. So they didn't want to make that same mistake. So they um, tried to receive them. And that's why they believe Barnabas was Zeus and Paul was Hermes. Now, it says in 13 that the priest of Zeus, the temple was at entrance to the city, brought oxen and gardens to the gates and wanted to offer sacrifice from the crowds. And the priest of Zeus, it was, it was his job to lead the people into worshiping the two, the two gods. Zeus and Hermes, which in this case Paul and Barnabas. So, um, so he was leading the worship into um, to worshiping him. So then, what happened? Paul and them and Apostle Barnabas all heard it and they tore their garments. What did we learn about why the people tear their garments? Who can remember? Why the people? Why do people tear their garments? There you go, Shelly. That's it. Blasphemy. That's why they tear their garments. So they tore their garments because they saw that it was blasphemy. Um, and you know, when you when you tear your garments in this case, you know, this is this is a revulsion at blasphemy when you tear your garments. It's like this is just like, oh my god, you guys are, that this is horror to them. So they tore their garments and they um they rushed out into the crowd. And they said, why are you doing these vain things? Vain things is a description of idolatry. Idolatry and all false religion. That's what vain things mean. 
in scripture. When you see that, why do you imagine vain things? Why do you do these vain things? And so, um, so, so with them, why he said we are also are men of like nature like you. We're just like y'all. We're not no gods, you know. And we bring you good news, which is the word of God, that you should turn from these vain things, these false religions, this idolatry, and turn to a living God. Now, you know, this whole time he had been teaching on the God of Isaac, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob. That's how he always, you know, Paul has always come on. That's how all the apostles come on. But they was in idolatry. They were in idolatry. So he couldn't come at them with that type of speech. He had to come at them from a different approach. So instead of saying the God of um, um, Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, he had to talk about the God who created the world and everything in it. You know, so they believe in God, but they just was way off with everything else. He was thinking for the fake people. But, but that's what it means, Ashley. You say you're thinking of the fake people for blasphemy. Yeah, but it's still blasphemy. It's still it's, it's still the custom when someone blasphemes, they, they tear their garments. Now, it may have been, they tore their garments. It was fake, but it's still the custom that do, that they um do when there's blasphemy. They just wanted to make it look like, you know. It was fake, but it's still a thing. <laughs> oh, so you just had to mix up. Oh, okay. All right. So when they said that, so when he when he started teaching them about the God that they created this world and everything in it, he said in um, 17, yet he did not leave himself without witness, for he did good by giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons. Now, when he says that he did not give himself without witness, this was God's providence. This was God um, um, showing his creative um, power. This is, this is how you testify that God exists through his creative, his creative power. This is what he was testifying. To man's reason of his existence, um, and as does um, to, to and and having um, man um, own conscience, and their conscience contains the moral law. So even in your conscience, you you have morals, you follow moral laws. That's a prime example that God exists, and so that's what He was telling them. You know. All these things that you see, all these things that you experience, all even what you think in your conscience, this is an indication that God exists. You know, and so this is that's why he said he didn't leave himself without witness. You see this, you are witnessing this, so this is letting you God exists. Alright, let's keep reading 19. He said, But but Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and have persuaded the crowds. They stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples gathered about him, he rose up and entered the city, and on the next day he went on with Barnabas to Derby. When they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in faith and saying that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. And when he, when they had appointed elders for them in every church with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. So, of course, they thought they killed uh, Paul when they stoned him. I mean, you know, stone, you know Paul still got to reap what he sowed. You know, he was stoning people himself, so gotta get a little bit of yourself, you know. Gotta get the little punishment too. You, you did you stone the people. So you still gotta pay for what you did. So supposing um that he was dead, you know, um of course Paul did not die from the stoning. But unfortunately some people do believe that the stoning was linked to when Paul saw the third heaven. And so a lot of, some people teach this. That Paul died when he got stoned. That's how he, he was able to see the third heaven. But that that was that had nothing to do with. This is in Second Corinthians twelve. If you guys um curious to know when he when Paul said he went to the he saw the third heaven. Um, so they probably thought Paul had died and resurrected. And um, and if if Paul had died and resurrected, that's a big thing. That means Luke would have mentioned this in Acts that Paul had died and resurrected. But they didn't mention it because that's not what. You know, he did, I mean, he probably was faking like he was dead when he, they stoned him. And then when they stopped stoning him, people picked him up and he got, because he got up and went on and he left. 
you know and so um so like i said it has nothing to do with him seeing the third heavens he did not die and come back he did not die and get resurrected and at the same time too the time that he saw the third heaven verse the time that he got stoned they're not even um they they're off it doesn't even line up but unfortunately some people do teach this So, um, so in, uh, in 27, when they, I was saying, he said, when they arrived and gathered the church together, again, they gathered the church together, another indication that only believers assemble together. They gathered the church together, they declared all that God had done with them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. Now, in 23, he said, and they had appeared appointed elders for them in every church. Remember, I made this um, a video the other day about um, how the elk, how the apostles were the foundation. The, uh, the apostles and uh, prophets were the foundation. They was to go around and build the church. They build all the churches, and they and then they appoint leaders. And they always appoint elders to every church to take over because, you know, the apostles is, the apostles was supposed to build the church, bring the people in. Once they build the church, win the people over with the signs and the wonders and have believers. Now, we have a church right here. Let's go over here and make another church. But now we're going to leave an elder, leave some people to run this church. And then we're going to go build another one here. Then we're going to leave elders to run this church. Then we're going to go build another one here. See, they was the building of the church. They wasn't to, to stay, because you can't be the pastor at every church. They job, God said that I go make disciples out of many. And remember, Jesus said, this is, what, this is why I will, on this rock will I build my church. So that was the commission of the apostles, to build the churches. They go to this place, bring people to Christ. Thousands, of, they done built their church here. Now we have a place to assemble. Let's assemble together. I'm going to appoint elders. Boom, let's go do the next. They did their job. Build the church. You can't build a church unless people hear the word of God and come to believe. So that's what the apostles' job was. Our job is to maintain the church. You know, that's what the elders and the pastors and the teachers was for, to maintain the church. We don't build the church. God called apostles and prophets to build the church. He's not calling apostles and prophets today to build a church. All he need now is the elders to keep the churches up, pastors and the teachers keeping every, everything in line you don't need anybody else to build a church they already been built it's already been built they because it to when people don't understand if god promised that the apostles was going to build a church he didn't say it's going to be people building the church after you he said the apostles he gave them the commission they fulfilled it if they didn't fulfill it, they'd still be here. They fulfilled it. The churches were built and all of them passed away. And now we are still running the churches today. We're not a building a church. You don't need a new set of apostles or prophets to build the church. It's already been done. To say apostles and prophets are still building the church today is to say that God didn't, that God wasn't good with allowing the apostles to fulfill the um, commission back then. The commission is done. He assigned the 12 apostles to do that. So it's been done. So now today, we just keep it running. We just keep adding to the kingdom. It's no, we don't perform the same roles as the apostles and the prophets. We're performing the roles as the, as the elders, as, as teachers, as preachers, as people that are just, and as believers that are sharing the gospel. That's how we keep it going. We're not rebuilding anything. That's just it's saying that Jesus ain't, Jesus, the people he appointed ain't, they going on the job. That's basically what people are saying today. All right, 24. He said, when they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia, and when they had spoken the word in Persia, they went down to Italia, and went, from there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended for the grace of um, God for the word they had fulfilled. And when they arrived and gathered the church together, they declared all that God had done with them and how he had opened a door of faith to Gentiles. And there remained no little time with it. They remained no little time with the disciples. No little time means they stayed there for about a year. That's what no little time means. Um, when 
he's saying they remained no little time with disciples. They stayed for close to a year. About a year. And so, um, anybody have any questions before we move into the last verse? Last chapter. But some men came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers, Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had um, no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and the elders about this question. So being sent on their way by the church, they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, describing in detail the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brothers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they declared all that God had done with them. But some believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees rose up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them in order them to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders were gathered together to consider the matter, and after there had been much debate peter stood up and said to them brothers you know that in the early days god made a choice among you that my mouth the gentiles should hear the word that by my mouth the gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe and god who knows the heart bore witness them by giving them the holy spirit just as he did us and he made no distinction between us and them having cleansed their hearts by faith now therefore why are you putting god to the test by placing a yoke on the next um uh, uh, of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear but we believe that we will be saved through um, the grace of the Lord Jesus as they will and all um, the assembly fell silent and they listened to Barnabas and Paul as they related what signs and wonders God had done through the, them among the Gentiles after they finished speaking James replied brothers listen to me Simeon has related how God first visited the Gentiles to take them take from them a people for his name and with his words of the prophets agree just as it is written after this i will re return and i will rebuild the tent of david that has fallen i will rebuild his ruins and i will restore it and that remnant of mankind may seek the lord and all the gentiles who are called by my name says the lord who makes those things known from um, of old therefore my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the gentiles who turn to god but should write to them to abstain from the things polluted by idols and from sexual immorality and from that has been strangled and from blood from um for from ancient generations moses has had in every city those who proclaim him for he is read every sabbath in the synagogues hey millie now <laughs> now acts 15 uh like th throughout the history Leaders have met, you know, to, um, we'll, we'll get to it, um, Tazi. Throughout in, um, history, leaders have met, um, to settle, uh, issues with doctrines. And so, there were seven different, different councils in the churches, in the early church history. And one of them being the Council of Nicaea, which everyone talks about today. Everybody talks about the Council of Nicaea. But the most important council was the Jerusalem Council. And, it, and because it established the answer to um, most of the uh, doctrinal issues, and that was, um, what must I do to be saved? And so, keep in mind, these men, because we said some men, um, and we're talking about, uh, you know, these false teachers of Judea, they were self-appointed guardians of legalism. They was teaching the doctrine of salvation by works. So Judea believed unless you are circumcised the way that Moses. If you are, if you, you know how it is when you, if you are circumcised, you can unless you are circumcised, you cannot be saved. That's basically what they was teaching. That's when they came. That's when the Pharisees rose up and said it is necessary to circumcise them and to order them to keep the law of Moses. So they still had this, this um, legalistic mindset. Saved by your works. They still, it's still it's just some people that still believe this. And so, um, Peter came. This one I told y'all, Peter, this is the last Peter um, time you see Peter. So, Peter came to them 
and let them know that they was going to be a light um, to the Gentiles. Um, and so Peter also brought up old scriptures. So when he was saying that um, in 1510, when he told them, um, he was saying, now therefore why? Oh, he said, and, I, and he made no distinction between us and them having cleansed their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? This is what Peter was saying to them. Now, a yoke is a description of law and legalism. That's what he was saying by yoke. And, um, and this, of course, was of the scribes and the Pharisees. So they expected the Gentiles to carry a load that they themselves were, were willing, weren't willing to bear. They didn't even follow the laws themselves half the time. So you're trying to tell the Gentiles to do the same. So so um, P- Peter and them, they, well, um, Paul and them, they recited from um, Amos. Amos 9, um, 11 and 12. And then Jeremiah 12 and 15. This is what he was reciting. So when he said those scriptures... Um, especially when he got to 17, he said, they, The remnant of mankind may seek the Lord, and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who makes these things known from, um, from of old. This was James pointing that Amos made no mention of a Gentile becoming a Jewish proselyte. And what do you mean by the proselyte? It's people, you know, changing it to their religion, like the Gentiles changing it to the Jewish religion, what they what they did. There is Amos didn't say that. He didn't say that they had to change and, and start being just like the Jews because they're they're um getting in on that same promise. If Gentiles can be saved without becoming Jews in the kingdom, um, then there is no need to become a proselyte in the present age. Remember the Bible says, on earth as it is in heaven. So if then the kingdom God called them salvation and then say, you know, I ain't saying nothing about you. You had to be switching over to no Jews. I just told you to come to salvation by grace and faith. If this is what it said in the kingdom, why are you telling them in the present age that they have to switch over and be like the Jews? He didn't say that. So they don't have to become circumcised like the Jews. They don't have, they didn't have to follow the same laws as the Jews. This is what people, a lot of people was getting mixed up when, you know, a lot of people that teach this, they're like, we ain't under the we ain't under the laws of the um of Israel. We had our own laws. So that means we ain't got to follow. That's not what it was saying. You know, we still have to be obedient just like them, but they had legalistic views. They felt like people had to follow the legalistic views, and we don't have to do that. But we still have to follow follow the moral laws of God, just like um, Israel. And a lot of people teach that we didn't have to follow nothing of Israel because we were our own people. We was Gentiles. No, in order to get in on the promise, you got to do the same obedience as the people that was in on the promise. The only thing he was telling them that you ain't got to follow these legalistic ways like them. The Gentiles didn't have to do that. But... um. But when he get to 19, he said, therefore, my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to God. So he's telling them, don't be trying to, um, the Greek word for trouble means to throw something in the path of someone to annoy them. So he said, don't be annoying them with that legalistic mess, you know, because it, it could be discouraging. And so he was saying, don't, just, don't be coming at them with that annoying man. It's the decision of the Jerusalem council, um, council after, they, after they discussed this. After they made, the decision, they, they made the decision to agree, don't bother him with this mess. You know what I mean? After they had the discussion in this council, they made the decision to, no, don't bother them. Let the Gentiles, um, let them be. Let them know that you do not have to do works. You don't have to observe any rituals. There's not required for salvation. So they made that agreement. Um, and so because of that, those false teachers of Judea, they call them Judaizers. Judaizers. They, they was commanded to lead them along that they're harassing them about. They need to follow the laws of Moses. They had to cease when they had that meeting, that council. So they had to lead them along. And so, um, but um, because of that, James and the other leaders, they didn't want the Gentiles to um, 
you know, take they take advantage of their freedom, not to re- not to reveal in their in their freedom of Christ. And this is where in nineteen when he said, therefore my um judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to God, but should write to them to abstain from the things polluted by idols and from sexual immorality and from what has um, been strangled and from blood for um, from ancient generations Moses had had in every city those who proclaim him for he has read every Sabbath in the synagogues and what he was telling them we know that you are freedom, free of free Christ but don't do anything that can make um, the Jewish believers um, to follow the same liberty and violate their conscience. You remember when, when Paul was talking about this in Romans, about violating someone's conscience. So he was, so James was suggesting to the Gentiles, although you are free, um, free in Christ, let's respect the Jews, their, their, um, the laws that they do follow, the things that can that have you um, being polluted by idols. So you know how they was um, sacrificing the meat and all this stuff. So he was telling them, let's let's do that though. Let's follow that. Because you're looking at it, okay, so now the Gentiles don't have to follow this. So then if they don't follow this, if this could, because this is not required for salvation, you know, but, but this is what the Jews believe. This is what the Jews believe that were, you know, that was to stay pleasing to God. And God don't get mad with you because you want to do this to please God. So that's what they want to do to please God. Don't, don't try to, um, show off the fact that you don't have to do all that. And then because they got this mindset that. Oh, well, we don't need this for salvation, so I ain't going to do it either. So now you're making them, you know, disrupt their conscience. You're making them go again, violate their conscience. That's what you're making them do. So that's why James proposed that the Gentiles abstain from the for four of the pagan, four pagan idolaters. Um, and that was, um, you know, things that was polluted by idols, like um, food offered up to pagan gods. And, and then he said, you know, like, you know, when they, because what they did was they offered up the foods to the pagan gods and then they'll sell it in the temple book, butcher shops. So he was telling them not to, and that was to that, to the Jews, that was repulsive. That was a disrespect and it was also for, forbidden by God when you read it in Exodus 20, um, Exodus 20 and 3, and Exodus 34 and 17, and Deuteronomy 5 and 7. This was, this was forbidden by God in the Old Testament. So they still kept that mindset to not do that. Even though things have changed, that God doesn't was you know it wasn't a you know a, a must do because Jesus came and died and got rid of all that. These people still had this mindset. Even Peter had it. Remember when God told him rise and eat, and he was like, I can't eat things that's unclean. So they still had that. You know God ain't gonna go against that. You're doing it to obey me. It's not a baby. You know that's what you want to do. So they want to maintain that. Don't 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 do nothing to make them want to leave that because they don't have to do it no more. And then you go run into it. So he was telling them to avoid anything they have to do with idols, including the meat, off of the idols, sexual immorality. You know, he talking, he's not t- talking just sexual sins in general. He's talking about, he was um, talking about orgies. You know, the orgies associated with the worship of pagan gods. He was um, telling them to refrain from that. And see, that's what these holidays represent. A lot of people don't understand this. Christmas. Valentine's Day, Easter, this is when they did these sexual orgies um, to worship their pagan gods during these holidays. They were sacrificing children. They was doing all these little, these, these satanic rituals on these holidays. This is why um, the Bible tells us not to celebrate like the pagans do. And this is why you have to do your research. This is, the, the holidays was the day they did these sexual orgies. And so, um, so when you celebrate these holidays, you're basically helping them celebrate when they did these orgies and sacrificed these children. You know, they killed these children. And so, um, so this is why you need to know what you're doing, know what you're celebrating. This is why you don't focus on the things of the world. This is why we don't focus on man's traditions. You just do, just, just follow God. Just keep up with your relationship with God and stop trying to do all this extra stuff. Like um, everyone else doing, try to come up with some excuse. So the Gentiles were um, were to avoid um, doing these things, and they also was a, was to avoid being offensive when it comes to marriage and any relationship with the opposite sex. And so um, you know, like, you know how to deal with the divorce and, and all this stuff. Not, you know, respect that. Do that too. Let's not, you know, have them thinking that they can divorce for any reason. And so then when he said what has been strangled with blood, he was talking about dietary restrictions. So they had to follow those four things. 
to keep so you can just I mean that's just showing love for your fellow brothers and sisters, although they're Jews, this is what they follow. This is love, and let's just do it, you know. We ain't gonna harm nothing. Either way, the substance is Christ. So let's just have that mindset. All right, let's keep reading. 22. Then it seemed good to the apostles and the elders with the whole church to choose men from among them and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They sent Judas, called Barsabbas, and Silas, leading men among the brothers. With the following letter, the brothers, both, um, the brothers, both the apostles and the elders, to the brothers who are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia, greetings. Since we have heard this, um, that some persons have gone out from us and troubled you with words unsettling your minds, although we gave them no instructions, it has seemed good to us, having come to one accord, to choose men and send them to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have um, therefore sent Judas and Silas, who themselves will tell you the same things by word of mouth. For it has, been, it has seemed good to the Holy Spirit to us to lay on you um, no greater burden than these requirements, that you abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from what has been strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, you would do well. Farewell. So when they sent, they were sent off, they went down to Antioch, and they gathered the congregation together. They delivered the letter, and when they had read it, they rejoiced because of its encouragement. And Judas and Silas, who were themselves prophets, encouraged and strengthened the brothers with many words. And after they had spent some time, they were sent off in peace by the brothers to those who had sent them. But Paul and Barnabas remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. So they agreed that the Gentiles needed to follow those things that I was talking about um, the, with the pagan worship. So they sent the letter out to confirm it. And they was fine with it. It was encouraging. This, you know, they encouraged them. Um, they was fine with it. They agreed to it. This, you know, then we do what we need to do. You know? And so when all that um, was done, everybody was in agreement, they was able to leave in peace and go on to the next, um, to the next church that they, that they built up. Now, after some days, we're reading 36. Paul said, Oh, let's talk about them real quick. Um, Judas and um, Silas. When he said they sent Judas and Silas, I just want to tell you a little bit um, about who they are. Now, um, there's not much to say about Judas except that he was a prophet, which you saw that in verse 32. But um, Silas was also known as Savannah's. Now, you know, Savannah's, he accompanied Paul on his second missionary journey, but and later he was Peter's scribe. For his epistle, First Peter. So I want to give y'all a little background on who Silas was, because I know when you go in First Peter, you'll see the name Savannah, and that's the same person. All right, so let's move on to thirty-six. And after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, "Let us return and visit the brothers in every city where we proclaim the word of the Lord, and see how they are." Now Barnabas wanted to take with him John called Mark. But Paul thought best not to take with them one who had withdrawn from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. Now, remember, in the beginning, when they was about to part, it mentioned that John um, left and went back to Jerusalem. So he left them, basically left them hanging and went back. So Barnabas wanted to take Mark with them this time. And Paul was like, no, why would you take somebody that left us and went back to Jerusalem the first time? So he basically said, dude, Paul ain't even alive. You know? So he was like, no, don't take him with um, you. And, um, so, like I said, but Paul thought best not to take with them one who had withdrawn from them in um, Pamphylia and had not gone with them to work. So he never put in work with them. So what happened? There arose a sharp disagreement, so Paul and Barnabas got into a um, heated argument. So that they separated from each other, Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and departed, 
having been um, commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord, and he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. So, yeah, this was not a friendly parting when they separated from each other. They were in a strong disagreement about John Mark, and he did withdraw from them earlier. And, and see, the thing about Barnabas, you got to look at it. Paul was an apostle by, that was assigned by Christ, and what he said was true. So that alone should have encouraged you to submit um, to Paul's authority. But he didn't do that. He, he took John Mark anyway, and then they separated. Now they did reconcile. You will see it in 1 Corinthians 9 and 6. They did reconcile. They did get back together. I mean, they're men of God. You see, they can't, can't inherit the kingdom of God arguing and him unforgiveness and still harboring some type of anger towards each other. So they did fix the situation but at that time they did part and he ignored what Paul suggested that he took John Mark in anyway which is fine why because Silas was a good choice for um, Paul to take with him why because Silas was a prophet and so he could he could proclaim and teach the word as well he was a Jew which gave him also access to the synagogues because he was a Jew and he was a Roman citizen so then he enjoyed the benefits of being a Roman, of, of, of being a Roman um, citizen. That means he was getting the same benefits as um, Paul and the same protection. So taking Silas with him had his perks. It was a good choice for him to take him. Um, so they're not getting hurt or anything. But the way that they um, parted was not good. And you know Barnabas. Um, it would have made sense for him to respect um, Paul's decision because the evidence that Paul was presenting puts his it it, it, it favored his decision, and so um and so that was that, and they parted, and like I said, they reconciled by the time they got the first Corinthians. So that is it. On that note, if y'all have any questions, what time is it? have any questions or just you know just want to have a little bible talk um, we can go from there we can do that i know y'all don't have any questions y'all never do <laughs> i was going to give you guys a test today but i was like nah it's first corinthians chapter nine first corinthians nine and six You'll see him bring up um, Barnabas. Bar Bar see a job getting in there. Let's talk about that. I'll be blaming on that job. He mm -hmm. you knew whipping. Say, let's talk about that. Is it your job or are you getting on their nerves? Are you doing what you're supposed to do? You gotta, you know, when we, we have these jobs and people are getting on your nerves, those people are getting on my nerves. You got to still remember that you represent Christ. They made you miss Bible study. You didn't miss Bible study. It's always on um, YouTube. You guys working for a bunch of people that don't love God. Can you imagine what life would be like if we was working for a company where everybody was Christians? You wouldn't have nothing to complain about. But we're working for a companies from people that don't serve God. We're working for people that's of this world. You're going to expect, they're going to get on your nerves. You're going to do something to get under your skin. How you know these things aren't tests for you? All they're going to do is going to build up your relationship with God. It's going to mature you. It's going to help you. You're going to fail some tests. You're going to have some people may get on your skin and you may go in on them and then you're going to be like, oh God, I did you wrong. I failed you, Jesus. And you're going to fix it. So then the next time the person on the nurse, you will handle it better. See, a lot of these things be happening so you can, so you can, your faith can increase. Your walk with him can increase. It's, it's for you. You know what I mean? They're not Christians. They're not going to say, oh, I'm going to make sure you get done so you can go to Bible study. They don't care about no Bible study. This is why I put it on YouTube. Because I understand. I get it. Sometimes they ain't gonna let you off from work. Sometimes, sometimes you're gonna miss it. And I know it's 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 different when you want to be live. But always remember, you're trying to get spiritual food, and that food is always gonna be available. So, 
Don't be letting them, don't be getting upset when they made you miss. You still here. He says, definitely a test for you because you be getting mad for real. <laughs> Yeah, always, always find joy in your tribulations. Remember, always find joy in persecution, tribulation. So you hide in the kitchen now. <laughs> Them jobs be terrible. I remember I got, um, and then the thing is, God was warning me, but I wasn't. I couldn't get it. I wasn't understanding. Like they finna come for you. I didn't, you know, I don't, I, I'm, my, my faith is solely on God. So when something of the world happens and, you know, I'm working with clients and they bringing up stuff for the world, I'm not for that world stuff. I don't pay attention to that. I, I serve God. That's all I'm concentrated on. And that's my mindset. So when they come to me, tell me, oh, you got to be careful, COVID. I don't care about careful, but all I got to be worried about is uh, God. And so the glass clients I didn't, uh, I worked for, they didn't, they couldn't stand it. I talk about God, I might be, um, if my clients sleep, I might be reading the word or whatever, and they, it was getting under their they skin. So they come to me with some worldly stuff. You saw the news, I don't be crying about that stuff. You know, people get mad when you ain't in agreement with that stuff. Mm-hmm. They got mad at me, reported me, talking about they ain't want me there no more, so I got back there to my um, job, and they was telling me that you can't be pushing your religion on people. Who pushing my, I ain't pushing my religion on nobody. Just because I don't agree, and the reason why I don't agree is because I love the Lord. They want to get mad for him. Did I get mad at him? Nope. No, I ain't get mad at them. You know, so they didn't want me working there no more. But the thing about it is, neither did God. <laughs> he was wanting me to leave the client. And I didn't catch on. You know how he came to um, <laughs> Peter three times and Peter still didn't get it? It came in four times and I still didn't get it. And because I didn't get it, I had to get forced out. And that was their way of forcing me out. They didn't like the fact that I was loving the Lord. You're going to just have these issues. You know? You're going to have these issues at these jobs. These people don't love God. You can't expect them to react like they love God. He said he called you Miss Spiritual. And he said, you were like, thank you. Thank you. Because if you call me Miss Spiritual, that means you're seeing something in me for me, for you to say that. And he asking you what he read last night every day. Is he asking you, is he joking or he really want to know? Because if he really want to know, it might, be your, it might be your door opening. Oh, I read so-and-so last night. It speaks on how we supposed to, you know. Do you know we're supposed to minister to people that seek after God? So if he's seeking, give him some Jesus. You ask him one day, he's like, well, you really want to know what I'm speaking? You really want to know what I read on? Miss Bible study. <laughs> you know, I like, like if I'm on the phone with somebody that's not saved, a friend of mine, that's how I know I changed because if you're dealing with friends that knew you when the world was in your mess and then they talk to you and they may sit up and cry, oh, I'm sorry, forgive me. But, you know, when you get that type of respect, oh, I know how you, that's how you know you change. That's how you got to get God to glory. So, yeah, they call you Miss Bible study. They call you Miss Spiritual. You know that you don't, you're doing something. You're showing something that see that you have changed and that feels good when they notice it. You know? When they notice it, you see you conducting yourself all holy and all that. You know, you're gonna run to somebody gonna call you holier than thou. But when they give those nicknames like that, that is compliments to me. You know? Miss Bible study, that's so cool. Miss Spiritual. <laughs> Thank you! To God be the glory. That's what you tell them. Thank you! Oh, this- you're so sweet calling me that. Because I'd rather be called that than a hypocrite. Then a fake Christian call me that. <laughs> Some people say that. Why, thank you. All oh, the compliments are, oh, thank you so much. That's what you say to him. <laughs> said I mean business. <laughs> Tell the person, thank you, because I ain't playing. I'm about my father's business, for real. Amen, man. Yeah, we take those compliments in the day. 
But when you guys are going through stuff at your jobs, pray, pray, pray. I'm telling you, it is power in prayer. God to be removing people. I mean, you got to keep in mind, we're, we're, we're children of we're children of God. So what you think coming with that, um, that being a child of God? Favor. Y'all better take advantage of that favor. Y'all better go to God about these people. Y'all better go to God about these people. Look, God, if it's something I'm doing wrong, let me know. But this person right here, because you know, you, you know that you know the devil need a host. You know, the devil need a host. Just like we host the Holy Spirit, people host the enemy. So if he wants somebody to get under your skin, I'm gonna get up in here and say, say something. This person said something stupid the other day and get under her skin. Say lifestyle, <laughs> right, Ashley? Lifestyle. Oh, you're making me blush. Thank you. That's how you do it. You think you're holier than thou? Think. I thought you knew. Cause I got the Holy Spirit, so they do kind of make me holier than you. Cause you don't have the Holy Spirit, so thank you. I am holier than thou. Them be the ones be making me mad, yo. Yeah? That's a purpose. They on assignment. They on assignment, especially when you're babies in Christ and you're trying to grow, or you haven't, or you, or this is where you weak in. You know, if you weak, if you, if people get under your skin so quick, then you're gonna get tested. You know, we're God is trying to present us holy to Him. That means, like, you you can't get under God's skin like that. But even if you do, God has a divine punishment. We ain't got no divine punishment. We're told to we're we're told to not get we're told to not be angry. Um, we can get angry, but sin not. So when it ain't like you can you can't get mad. You just can't go in on them people. God can punish you. He can give you some divine punishment. He can get mad and be like, look, you know, next you know you don't you rent your car or something like that. God can do that. We can't. We're we're supposed to be presented to God holy, and that's what His job is. How you gonna know if you're being presented holy? How you gonna know if you can if you can get angry without sinning? If you don't allow, if you don't get tested, where your anger has to go there? How we gonna get presented as being holy? If you're still doing things that's not holy, and wisdom comes with experience, so. If you're not experiencing things to make you grow, how are you gonna grow? I want you guys to always remember that. When somebody come at you acting like a stank, remember what God is doing with you. Oh, he's just trying to make me grow. And don't fall into that. You know? So, um, I just want you guys to remember that. And sometimes it's hard to do. So that's why you go to God. You got to throw, you know, throw it out on the altar. So you may not be on that level yet. Somebody coming and call you a, 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 a outside of your name. They may say, you, you be, you be like, oh, see, no, nah, she done went there with it. She went there with it, God. Um, and sometimes you just going to flip. And you going to fail that test. You know what I mean? So, um, you got to go in there, Lord, I messed up. You know, forgive me, cause I mean, keep in mind that that type of behavior can't enter the kingdom. I always remember that. But she went there, God. You know, be honest with them. You know, I, I don't have that kind of strength right there, God. I need you right now. I don't know how to handle somebody calling me that without me getting upset. But I don't want to um, not please you, God. So I need you right now. I need your deliverance right now, Lord. That's how you do it. Cause it's hard. He know in the flesh. But, but he created us to depend on him. And you're supposed to depend on him in everything. So if you see that's a weakness for you, you can't in the bathroom. Wherever you got the chance to be alone, okay, Lord, this, this, this right here was new for me. You know, um, I need you on this one. <laughs> it's like, I was called a ninja bee one time. The of, I'm telling you, y'all, I might. My attitude was irate. 
all the time. In my beginning walk, I ain't, you know, I I read the word, but when it came to my temple, I did not, I, God did not exist when it comes to my temple. I was not even trying to get on point when it comes to that. I felt good when I gave you the business. You know what I mean? That felt good to me. Like, God, let me have this. <laughs> you know, just let me have this, you know, because I, I, I can crush people with some words, you know. And shut them up, silence them, hurt their little feelings, and hit the soul. That felt good to me. You came at me sideways. I was looking for it. Come with it. I'm about to give it to you. You know, I had my supervisor ready to fight me at a, at my job because I ate up with words. You know, and then on top of that, you you really trying to come in? You really want to go there with me? Cause don't 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 think I just got words. I can give you some physical business. So that's that mindset I had. You know. Ain't no growth in that. You can't enter the kingdom with that. But I wasn't ready to get it up. <laughs> I wasn't ready to get that up. I felt I was in control. I felt like I had still had control of that. Because when you have to humble yourself, you feel like you lose that control. You feel like they done punked you. Now you got to turn into a punk. So when someone cuts you out, you got to be all chill. Like, come on, God, let us have that. Let us have that moment, Lord. No. Because now we're not dependent on God. He told us in the word that vengeance is mine. You think I don't know they said that to you? You think I don't, you think I'm not hearing them speak to you like that? You think I don't hear them trying to get under your skin? Don't you be ignorant. I got this. Because see, I can give the divine punishment. Let me do it. I got you. I got your back, says the Lord. So then when we have this mindset that we're going to trust in God, that'll bring you peace. But we don't get happy when that vengeance comes for them. Because it's going to come for them. Why? Because God promised it. Vengeance is mine. That means, <laughs> oh, they're going to get the business. A lot of times we're not going to see it because we know he knows some of us will still be like, ah, see, that's what you get. Thank you, Jesus. And see, that's wrong. <laughs> so just sometimes we ain't even gonna get we ain't even gonna get to see that punishment because he know how we gonna act. You know he know how we gonna act. We gonna we gonna have some un, un you know some low key happiness. <laughs> you know old girl ready to call her. I like, see that's what she get. See that's what, see she came from. That's what she get. Vince, see, you don't want it. That's why we ain't got. That's why we ain't gonna see it. Cause that's wrong. You don't find happiness in that. You know we still supposed to love our enemies. We're still like, a, and, and then the thing is, if we even see them getting the wreck, we're supposed to help them. Even though they just cussed us out and called us all kinds of names, we're supposed to help them. That's what the parable, the Good Samaritan, is about. A lot of us took that Good Samaritan. It's just being a Good Samaritan to somebody who, you remember the, the person that was. Uh, Abused and, and um, beat down that was left on the road The parable that Jesus was giving And um, Jesus was talking to them You know the one the priest walked off And the Levite walked on the other side as well But the Samaritan came and helped that person They looking at the Samaritan as being a good Samaritan No Jesus was speaking on an actual Samaritan That's why when you look in this um, parable, the Samaritan was in capital letters. He's talking about the actual Samaritan. Why? Because remember, Samaritans was hated. Everyone hated the Samaritans. Samaritans was evil people. Keep in mind that Simon the sorcerer, they was under him. So they was all in the witchcraft. They were evil. They were mean. They hated the, um, the Jews, hated them. And they hated other people. Remember when Jesus was talking to the Samaritan woman, Paul Peter and him was like, oh, my brother, no, we don't talk to them. The people are evil. So that's why he did the, the Samaritan parable. He wasn't talking about being an actual good Samaritan. He was saying a Samaritan and a person that's hated and hate people was the one that helped that person. So he was telling you, be that person. Even though that person is hated by you or you hate that person, don't still be there for that person. And you know, a Samaritan, I hate that person. A Samaritan hate them type of people, that person that were laid down on the ground. But that Samaritan 
went and helped that person, um, uh, nursed the wounds, put the person on this animal, took them to an inn, and gave and paid two denarii. You know, two denarii is two months worth of pay for the inn. So he paid them to stay in the inn for two months and then told the person that was running the innkeeper to take care of him. And if you have to, if you need to spend, you know, if you got to get more things to provide for him, um, let me, um, when I come back, I'll pay you whatever I owe. Now, that was a perfect opportunity for that innkeeper to be like, I'm just going to lie and just get paid. I'm going to say I did this and did that. He's going to store them. But, but the, the purpose of that happening is um, Jesus teaching us to, to, to love with no, no ends. Don't even matter. So you was willing to pay all this just to help that person that was your enemy. He said, do that. That's what he told them. That's what the good Samaritan means. That's what he means by loving your enemies. He wasn't talking about just being a good Samaritan to the poor or just somebody in, in, that need help. That parable was telling you to love your enemies. That's how you treat your enemy. That's, that um, parable used to be, they parable got misinterpreted all the time, even I misinterpreted that time. You're right, and it's hard enough. This well, that's the reason why Jesus tells us to do it because it's easy to be there for somebody that's poor. It's easy to be there for somebody that you love. It's not easy to be there for somebody that you don't like. It's not easy to be there for an enemy. But if you can get that, that's a, that's that's how you be blessed. Why? Because Jesus laid down His life for His enemies, and we have to be that same way. It's easy for Him to lay down His life for them apostles. The apostles loved him. It ain't easy to lay down your life for a bunch of Pharisees that actually put you on that cross, but you still lay down, down your life for them. And we're supposed to be created in the image. We're supposed to be followers of that. So we got to be willing to do that, have that same type of love towards our enemies. And that's what he was teaching with that good Samaritan parable. If I'm going to do it, y'all going to do it. So Jay, Jay, you always teaching him when you don't realize it. <laughs> Thank you, love. So <laughs> God be the glory. But I hope that helps with you guys when y'all be going through these things with y'all jobs. Always just, just find scriptures. Find scriptures to meditate on when somebody go there with you. You know. Oh, let no corrupt communication come out of my mouth. Proceed out of my mouth. Okay, I got you. I need your strength right now. You know, that prayer, I'm telling you, your job will build up your prayer life. You know what I mean? And we need to, we supposed to pray without ceasing. Them jobs will build up your prayer life, boy. You'll be spending all the time, uh, all kinds of time with God when it comes to that job. And God gonna be loving it. Yeah, she called me today. My baby, my baby called me today. You know, I'm gonna do my thing for her. You know? Oh, here she go again. My baby calling me again. Okay, what she need? You know, because he loves spending time with us. You said you came home and wrote a song. <laughs> I wrote a song today too. Um, Taja. Did the same thing. Say job and kids. <laughs> what about your job and kids, Mary? And my dog. I'm about to give him to Jesus. All oh, that barking. What's out there? These kids, them your kids. You want <laughs> Well, I'm hoping you praying so you can have strength to uh, take take care of them kids. Don't be acting like them kids. Let's see what this dude. Did he say anything else crazy about his lack of belief?
Oh my God, he said that. Um, how does my my disbelief in God mm -hmm. automatically mean I should know how the universe was created? The same way our belief in God is the reason why we know how it was created. So you need patience every day? You said you can't wait to get married and have some bad kids. <laughs> you don't have no bad kids. You know, you 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 you're raising right. They won't be, they won't be bad. They might get bad as teenagers. I can't say Anthony. Anthony wasn't a bad kid. Anthony was, Anthony was weird though. When she was too, when she wasn't, she was never a terrible two. No, we always had terrible two year olds, but she was never a terrible two year old. Like if I, I, I remember taking her to a wedding, and you know, two year olds, Anthony, it's y'all just like you get over and sit down. You know, sit, don't don't you move. I took I took my daughter my two year old to her her grandma's wedding. She had Nene had on a cute little dress and she just sat there. Little posture. The whole wedding. She ain't moving now. She sit there and watch the grandma get married at two. Even I was like, I want a child, she can tell you You know, I was just like, and when we when the wedding was over. It was like a ton of parents, grandparents came up to me and said, I'm sorry, um, how you get that little girl to sit through the whole wedding? We were, they were, they was watching her, they was looking because she didn't move. Tuyo. She was not a terrible Tuyo. And, um, it was a whole, like I said, a whole lot of women, they was like, how you get her to sit there through the whole wedding? I said, I have no idea. <laughs> I do not know. Because I was expecting her to miss her. I'm peeping at her too. She better not make not one move. You know, that's that was already mine. Cause you know they're two. They're two, yo, they're terrible too. That's their reputation. She ain't budge. I'm sitting around the corner of my eye like she ain't even trying to get up and she she ain't no him no sinner. I'll take it. You know, and I kept telling him, I don't know. She just sat there and she was such a good little girl and all this little stuff. Yeah, I, I'm curious on that too. I need to find out why she was chilling too, you know, <laughs> cause it was expected for her to act up. And I didn't think anybody had noticed that. And then I realized, then it started making me pay more attention to her at two. I was like, she really is not a terrible two. She became a terrible teenager. <laughs> that attitude started coming in, but that was the only issue with her attitude. But that's when was a good kid. She was a good kid. But she threw me off with, with, the, uh, with, the, with the wedding and and everything else she did that too. I never had to say, get, 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 get off it, get. I ain't had to say that. I don't remember ever having to say that to her. But she was wild. She got about three or four years old, she started being clumsy. She almost got me, to, she, she tried to get, uh, get herself taken away from us while all that clumsiness she was doing. But other than that, she was a good kid. <laughs> you see, I had caps as a kid. I was... <laughs> Tyler said she would have tore that wedding up. <laughs> Sounds like crazy. So you would have tore that wedding up. <laughs> I ain't lying. It's expected. It's expected for them to be at age. Just always just being busy. Can't they? Because they restless. They ain't, I can't sit here. She sat there and sat with posture. That's probably what it was, Dorothy. She was being nosy. Like, what, what is going on? You know, you, so they're standing in front of each other. They, they just carry down the little dress. Look, see all the little colors in here. That's kind of. That's probably what's, what's going on in her mind. This is a little, a little odd setting, you know. Okay, I'm just gonna check this out and see how things be. That's probably what's going on through her mind. She probably learned from her brother because he was artistic and he won't finish it there. And uh, now nah, we ain't about this sitting down. Like, I'm about to tear it up in here.
<laughs> still tripping out Charles and Thomas. She would have tore that wig up. <laughs> She is her mother's daughter. Oh, with the flag for this is my father's flag. He was a vet and passed away, so you know at the funeral they have a flag over the casket and they fold it up and hand it to the um the wife or whoever's next in line, which is the daughter. So I already I already taught Andrea, we're done. Oh, did you? Wow. You used to do the, the funerals at Arlington. Wow. It'll be on you on YouTube, Andrea. It's always at 7 p.m. Eastern time though on Thursdays and Sundays. Oh, you a Navy vet? Wow, Jesus, five to seven people a day. Mm -hmm. Gosh, y'all, where you come from? Get with me, cause I ain't seen you. You ain't come in, you ain't speak, you just creeping up in here. You gonna creep up on the belt? You about to creep up on the belt. Twelve years, maybe. You know, as believers, I had, I had this conversation the other day. As believers, I saw a video where somebody posted this. I don't know if it was a TikTok video, but somebody shared it, which made so much sense. As believers, you know, we feel sad for people that lose loved ones. But we don't, you know, Christians don't really get sad like that no more when someone dies or someone family because we know this is a part of life to some people just gonna pass away our concern is that their soul is lost you know I don't um I don't you know like hurt for um passing away it doesn't it's not a shock or I don't, oh my god and, you know and when someone loses a loved one I pray for the family members because I know it hurts to lose someone you love I mean I lost my dad I lost my best friend but as a Christian Death don't hurt like it used to. But I always pray for those um, people to, um, you know, God to comfort those people who lose loved ones. Because a lot of them don't understand like we do. We're prepared for it, you know. And the last person I lost um, that I truly loved was my mother-in-law. I miss her like crazy, but she 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 partaking in the heavenly hummus, you know. So I don't, um, I wasn't, you know, I was happy for her that she passed away because she didn't have to deal with this no more. But at the same time, it's like, she was my bestie, man. Like, I was a little bit, uh, just a tad bit unhappy <clears throat> for selfish reasons. And that's because I want her um, here with me. You know, we had a nice little relationship we had this little thing where we 
go out to eat, you know, twice a month, just me and her, you know. We have our family time, but a lot of times it was just me and her. And then I got this video when I first went out to eat with her and, you know, uh, me picking her up and all this and this thing. So that's my, that's my memory, but I didn't, um, I didn't want to lose her. I was happy for her because I knew she was not lost, nowhere near lost, but I wanted her here with me. You know, I was like, oh, God, you could have gave me some more time. Well, that was my baby. My mother-in-law was, my, oh, that was so much so yeah I want her to stay for selfish reasons she was my hanging buddy and I ain't got nobody and a lot of people don't get along with their mother-in-laws but mine was the bomb.com and she met me when I was in the world with her son and then she get to, she got a chance to witness me coming to salvation me and her son and that's one thing she did say. I got the witness you come to salvation, right? You did. You did. And at least she was able to witness her son. And I better not come to salvation before she left this world. Because we was in that world, honey. We was... My husband ain't caring about no Jesus. You hear me? So... And she knew it, she ain't judged, she won't she ain't met her when I marriage. And she if I invited her this one time, she still ain't she gonna give us some, some biblical stuff. Then I watched how she did things, her prayer life. I I felt like she was my little she was my mentor. I didn't need I needed her to stay a little while. Yep. God used to be a life for those. I have had a Joseph of life. Right. And she and she was a life for us. And we was wild. Sometimes I know she's probably just smell weed on me. Sometimes we go visit. I don't know what they've been doing. She she knew. I smoke my cigarettes. She knew I smoke cigarettes. Cause I was like, little pack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me and Sean will be doing something little later. And I was wild. You know? I was just in my little world. She ain't never say nothing. All she did was pray. And she got the chance to witness and one day we had lunch. <laughs> One day when we had lunch, she brought that up. I got the witness y'all come to salvation. I said, we sure did. And she saw how rooted I was. Cause she, she started she started rooting in the word um, coming out of me. She was so impressed. Like, I got rooted, boy. I was like, you think I'm playing with God? <laughs> Say, why are you so funny? <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. Because me and my husband... Um, been together for uh, 15 years and so many of them years probably like half of that or more she saw us in the world so she was able to she spent she was able to get a couple years in with us actually being sold out to Christ and so she was grateful yeah she was grateful and I was learning out my how to pray about everything because of her this is this is the reason why I didn't want to lose her she was my, uh, it ain't like she was going to be distracting me from Christ. She was the reason why I learned how to be patient. She was the reason why how I learned how to pray about everything. She prayed so much about everything. I, I sometimes wouldn't even tell her nothing because she going to pray about it. You know. I dropped my glass on the floor. Well, let's pray on I'm blind. I'm just, just sharing the to visit her, you had to pray for you leave. That woman was amazing. She was amazing. Yeah, I'm telling her she prayed about everything. I went sometimes when he tell her nothing. I was like, I ain't at that point yet. I want to pray about everything. Yeah, she prayed without ceasing. She was overboard with it. You can drink some, drink some water. Oh, <coughs> hold on, hold on, let's pray. I <laughs> Jesus was praying about everything. I was like, I was telling my husband, I said, your mom pray about everything. That was it. Jesus. Prayers help. She helped me build a prayer line. That's probably why she did it. So God said, this is how you need to be praying. You need to pray to me like this. <laughs> yeah, 
she definitely paid without a season. Right, so that'd be a great sitcom character. I ain't lying, that'd be a funny skit. When somebody, when they say, when God say pray about everything, taking too far when it goes too far. <laughs> I should do a skit like that. In remembrance of my mother-in-law. Yeah, I should do a skit. And just make them prayers like crazy funny. Thank you, man. <laughs> That gonna be that, cause I ain't getting no skit in a while. I ain't gonna be having time, you know. I ain't getting no skit in a while. I'm gonna have to do that. I'm gonna have to do a skit like that. Do a skit in honor of my mother-in-law, cause she did pray about everything, and I just do some of the dumbest things to pray about, cause y'all know I can get really stupid. So yeah, I think I'm gonna do. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I might do a skit. I might do it this weekend. Don't don't hold me to it. I'ma do the skit, but I don't know. I'm, I'm you know I don't know when it's gonna be put up. But I'm gonna do it. man, won't that you that that tapped me and that lady who was claiming to be a pastor? Was that you? Yeah, that was you. Tapped me and that lady video that said she was a pastor and she had blonde braids and uh uh uh. Was that it? Is that an Eddie Murphy Golden Child hat she had on or something? She was talking to someone. She was just talking. She was going back and forth with you. <laughs> yeah, so it's about the Holy Spirit. She didn't mention the Holy Spirit. Good. Yeah, I'm glad you deleted it too. I wasn't um, wasting my time. A lot of times when you're out of the will of God, you're not going to um, include the Holy Spirit. You know? We always quit to say that the Holy Spirit is doing this and the Holy Spirit is doing that and leading us and leading us. Why would the Holy Spirit lead you not to follow God's will? You know, I was going to um, do a, a, a quick nugget yesterday and just say this one thing. When God called me to teach the gospel... When he first came to me and said that I'm going to call you to teach, and when I first seen him come to me in a dream, I automatically thought he was telling me to be a pastor, right? So I was ready to be a pastor. But he didn't let me go there. He made sure I knew I didn't call you to be a pastor. I called you to teach. The, I told you, told you to teach the gospel. I told you to teach the word of God. Teach my word. And they call you the pastor of the church. And he stopped me from making the biggest mistake that's going out of his will, right? And everything he told me that he, it, you know, by me being obedient, he told me everything that was going to happen. I'm going to put you on this platform. I ain't even known about that. I ain't known about no TikTok. I'm going to put you on the platform. Put you on the platform, and you're going to have thousands of people um, following you. Still didn't have a clue. In my mind, I'm supposed to be the pastor. No, this is not what you, I didn't say be a pastor. So I didn't, I didn't go against his will. Now listen. And I thank God that he told me, no, I didn't mean to be a pastor. Because when you're sitting there, you're waiting for God to give you the, the instruction. You don't move until he give you instruction. You don't move until there's clarity. <clears throat> so even though it was my mind to be a pastor, I didn't move to God clarified. The dream kind of had it look like he wanted me to be a pastor, but he was giving me symbols. Symbolism. Something that I understood, which was social media. So when you know you're not sure, you're not certain, you don't move. Because God is not a God of confusion. He's going to make sure you know what he's talking about. So I didn't move because I still was uncertain. And then he made it clear I didn't say. Remember the word says that women are not called to be pastors. Not supposed to teach men. So I understood so I didn't do, I didn't go outside the will. I followed the way he, the instruction he gave me. And when I followed those instructions, what he showed, what he said was going to happen, happened. I'm going to put you on the platform. It's going to be a thousand people that follow you. Your name is not going to be your name. That's what he said to me. That's what the dream said. I still didn't catch on, but I still didn't move outside of the will. I just did what I did. Got on TikTok. 
Got a thousand followers, the thousands of followers. My name is not my name. What's my name? King's daughter. Wasn't Janie. All this stuff came to pass. See what happens when you obey. This is why God said to write the vision down. So when you write down the vision, when you write it down, you be like, oh, my name is not my name. King's daughter. Oh, the followers, they're there. Oh, people coming to Christ. Oh, this is what you showed me. And you come to pass from obedience, right? So why is it that we have so many women pastors that God didn't call me pastor? How come no one is hearing from the Holy Spirit like a lot of us women who don't believe in um, women being pastors? How is that we get we got the memo? We got so many women pastors. You mean telling me God called all y'all? To be women pastors like no one got the memo. No one got the memo. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not understanding because I got the memo. So I don't understand how we got this many women pastors, but I got the memo. And I'm a person that was looking forward to be a woman pastor. I just don't understand. All these women pastors out here, and no one got the memo. No one read the word. No one was led by the spirit. Everybody just out here just being women pastors all willy-nilly. And saying, God called me. I know God called me. Yeah, I used to be under one of those too, oh, Mary. I was under a woman apostle and a woman bishop. And God let me be right under their teaching just so I can get to a point where I can call them out. But I just don't understand how so many women pastors didn't get the memo. See, this is how you know when you're being led by the Spirit. When you, like, with, like I said, with me, because I was under two women pastors, I was under this mindset that a woman can preach. So I was ready to move. God showed me on that stage. I was like, oh, it's on. Now, let me see what I can do to get my little thing going. You know, my little church thing going. And I'm going to get my little thing, you know, ready to roll with it. And then God said, whoa, whoa, slow down, little red Corvette. I ain't said nothing about you being no bastard. So I slowed down. Someone sit down. It's nothing like being led by the Spirit. Because the Spirit is not going to lead you down the wrong path. Just be led by the Spirit. Don't move under uncertainty. Don't be like, mm. <laughs> don't be like, I mean, is he saying that? If you got that, that's confusion. If you don't know, if you're not sure what God was telling you, you don't move until you are completely sure. Thank God. See, it's a sign. See, see the way the sign will know God will move in signs, it's going to tell you flat out. Ain't no signs. No, because you've seen a cat run across the street. Don't mean it's a sign. You know, God going to tell you straight up. Ain't that what he always done? That's what he always done in the Bible. He's always been straight up and just tell you. That's what he's always done. Throughout the whole Bible. Look, this is what I need. Look, this is what you're going to do. Look, this is what I'm going to do. He ain't had you one in a while like... I wanna see me. See, I'm thinking that he might mean this, so I'ma do this. No, that ain't how you roll. You don't. I, you don't assume. You don't. I think you don't do that. You need to. God, is this what you're saying? So you can be like, yeah or nay. And people aren't doing that today. So are you really doing it for God, or are you doing it for yourself? Because if you're doing it for God, then you wouldn't move without with, with uncertainty like that. Just be like, I'm not going to move until God clarify. Let me make sure this is what God means. And when you know that you know that you know that you know, you will move correctly. And then you will see the vision that God gave you come to pass. But if you're not seeing that vision come to pass, if you're seeing um, sorrow behind it, you done, you done did something you weren't supposed to do. Because even the sorrow, God going to warn you. Even Okay, look, I'm going to have I'm gonna have you do this. Now, it's going to be somebody that's going to slander you. It's going to be some people that come for you. He even going to warn you. 
But if you did stuff and sorrow came behind it and you ain't get no warning from God in there, because God ain't tell you to go that route. Yes, that clarity brings you to tears. That's what happened to me. But anytime God have you to do something, he's always going to let you know ahead of time. I told you God is a snitch. So even if you're teaching the word of God, he's going to let you know, like, this person's going to come in here and give you the business. Just be prepared. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just be prepared. You know, he do nothing without first revealing to his prophet, so he don't even allow stuff to go down. If you look throughout all the Bible, he always warns somebody. He always give one person a vision, let the other person know. You know what he did with Cornelius? He gave Cornelius a vision. He told Cornelius instruction to go to get Peter. And what did he do to Peter? He gave him a vision. Somebody finna come for you. Don't trip. He coming. You know? That's what God does. He's not a God of confusion. He's not going to have you looking goofy. Looking, like, I wasn't even expecting this, God. That ain't what God do. He don't side swipe you like that. And even if he don't tell you, it's going to be in scripture. Oh, this person did it. Oh, well, you remember the word said this thing ain't going to happen now. And the word, it's still him talking to you. Matt. Man, I love the way you said that. That God runs his kingdom like the military, very organized. And his yes is yes, his no is no. You better. That's why I love Matt. Because he is dead on. You got that right, man. He is coming soon. We definitely got to keep keep it going. He is the commander of That's right. Yes, he does. Yes, he is. And he's so amazing. When all this, when all of it comes to pass, when you see how he lays stuff out, then when you see it manifest and show itself, you'd be like, oh, God's amazing. Okay, God, I get you. You the man. Okay. Then it makes you want to submit to him even more because you see what he's showing you. You know, because when he showed me that about me teaching and had those people um, and, and how it's going now, that the Bible said that people that love God, People have come to Christ. People who have opened their Bibles in 20 years have come to me. I haven't opened my Bible in 20 years since you start teaching. This blesses my soul for one. And I know it blesses God because God, because it's my obedience. Because our job is to lead people to Christ. When you're not in the will of God, then you're missing out on the people that he has assigned you to. He assigned me to y'all. This is why y'all are here. So what if I'd have been disobedient, trying to run with the little church, all out of the will of God, and I'd have missed out on the people that he had assigned to me, which is y'all. You know? What if Paul would have just ignored You know, I know he blinded me, but I just, I just stay blind. I ain't got time. And all them Gentiles that he wanted to Christ. What if he just ignored that? What if he went his own way? Like, you know what? I'm just going to go out here and I ain't going to... I ain't even going out of day. I'm just going to kick back and wiggle my toes. And you got people God already called that's waiting to hear from you. And you saying, no, nah, I'm going to kick back and wiggle my toes. I mean, shh. It was rough coming off that blind thing. I ain't in the mood for all that. Mm -mm. When God said, go, go. You know, remember get blessed. You know, you know, them get blessed, and your blessing is winning someone to Christ. Cause you know God gonna show favor. You know God gonna give you a little, you know, gonna reward you, you know, for winning people to Christ. You know, they see your job, pull you in the office. You know, we gonna give you a raise today, cause you've been, you know, <laughs> look at that favor. Oh, go thank you, Jesus. You know, that favor. Yep. Moses is a prime example that God don't call to qualify, he qualifies to call. Moses stuttered and the uh, disciples were not the brightest things. You know, the, the disciples were un uneducated, unsophisticated, so they probably was a little ghetto. You know, if they was unsophisticated and uneducated, you already know we working with, with them. You know, they probably were just as ratchet. <laughs> Them apostles were ratchet. And that's who Jesus chose.
the 12 ratchet individuals and turn them into some well sophisticated educated individuals <laughs> I don't know, I don't, I don't know, um, Matt, because even when you come into them as new recruits, you got a little, them disciples was ratchet. I mean, look at Peter, he ready to call for ill, didn't even pay attention to what Jesus said, and he was ratchet. <laughs> Ain't listening, nothing, nothing Jesus said to him, look, they're going to keep my own care, we, we in it to win it round here, you what, we look out for our, he, they were hood. <laughs> They were hood. Now we look out for all. That's that. Hey, Jesus, that's my peoples. Look, cut the ear off. Like, back up, man. Along with it. Like, dude, didn't you just hear me tell you they was coming for me? I'm doing this for you. Why is you cutting off ears? You ain't listening. Hood. <laughs> And say, yeah, sounds like <laughs> ratchet. They was they were ratchet. That Holy Spirit got in them. This is where the, this is this is why God chooses people like us. Because it's not an individual. God knew we was we was a bunch of um uneducated, ignorant individuals. He knew we wouldn't want the brightest things compared to him. But how are you gonna see the Holy Spirit? work if he don't pull somebody that's really just you know with Moses with the stuttering disciples with the with that with that mindset so you pick those people why because that's the only way you can see the Holy Spirit at work you know what I mean if you got somebody that's already intelligent you're going like you know the square view tough you know so it ain't gonna do nothing when you see them as the teaching word of God but they already smart you take somebody straight, straight out the gutter. That's right, man. You take somebody straight out the gutter. Don't know nothing. Don't have the time. Know how to read correctly. Ain't really reading. Out, ain't really hitting on nothing. You take them. Why? Cause that's how you see the Holy Spirit do a do a three sixty in someone's life. That's how the Holy Spirit. That's like, oh yeah, the Holy Spirit definitely am. Yeah, Cause definitely, well, the Holy Spirit definitely are. Oh, Cause that cheap. Dumb is a, you know, because I'm the homie about the dumb. And she up here, you know what I mean? That's how, that's how, that's what, that's why God choosing people. I'm going to let y'all know how this, I'm going to let y'all know how far this Holy Spirit is. Watch me take these disciples and flip them. You know, the Holy Spirit up in Stephen. Stephen ate them Pharisees, them scribes, and all them in that council ate them up with his little unsophisticated, uneducated self. Yep, make something out of nothing. And it's so you could see the power of the Holy Spirit. All of y'all, all of us, all of us got some type of past that have people thinking like, yeah, you ain't really say. That Holy Spirit to give you that 360, and it can't nothing nobody can do but get silent. Cause I was ratchet, hood, attitudinal, disrespectful, and really, I ain't, I ain't about that reading life. I'm not really about that reading thing. You know what I mean? Reading, I ain't got time to study. Come on, you know this reading. I'm not really about that. I don't want the type of person to sit there and read books. I ain't had that kind of patience. I don't even like to read long text messages. I'm still like that today. Don't send me a long text message. You better give me a, send me a memo. I ain't got the patience. It's the only thing I got patience for. And this is why God called me to teach. Because I ain't got no other choice but to read. You know what I mean? Because I ain't about this reading stuff. I ain't got no time to do all this stuff. You know, go on with all that. So to, to grow up with friends that see this in me, this hood, I ain't read no book, I ain't about in life, I ain't doing all this stuff, and then they see me actually breaking down scripture, like the way that God is using me to break down scripture, and they're like, people that didn't, really ain't look at me like somebody's gonna say, some of them I may go away, then I got some of them that, 
used to be acting like they're teaching me. Now they're learning from me. And be like, okay, so can you help me with this? It's like, oh, I remember when you was the teacher, you know? Because they see the Holy Spirit. They know it's the Holy Spirit. Because they know this ain't, this ain't Jane. This ain't how Jane used to be. I don't remember Jane doing all You know it's the Holy Spirit. When you flipping the script and learning from me, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. That's the way, that's how you know the Holy Spirit is in the bed. Because they, you can't contribute to nothing but to the Holy Spirit. That's a big 360 change in you. Oh, that's Holy Spirit, yeah. That's how you see the Holy Spirit work. And, be, and when you see the Holy Spirit working somebody on that level, then you're going to get you some of that Holy Spirit. Like, you know what? Let me, let me give them some of that Jesus. Because that Jesus got you flipping like that. This, 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 it got you like this. It got your mindset like this. You sound so educated now. Yeah, let me get a little bit of that Jesus. How, how I get that? That's some of that Holy Spirit. Let me, let me, how, how can I be down with that? You're going to want some of that Holy Spirit. Yep, the Holy Spirit will have you going. I've had people say that. I've seen I've seen people change and um, um, glowing like that. I've seen, um, you know, I've watched people change. You know, so um, so to see that, to see how God changed me, in a way, in a world, you can walk away from that. I love the new person I've become. I love that I don't be so quick to go off on people. I love that I, he has changed me and made me humble. I love how he has made me hungry for this word. I love that he chose me to teach. I love teaching. I love it. I wish I could just do it full time and not even have to worry about it. I wish I could. I love it. I love what he has put in my heart. He has really gave, given me a heart of flesh. He removed the heart of stone and gave me a heart of flesh and he put a new spirit within me and I see it. And I am truly grateful, 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 I truly am. And I'm grateful for you guys, because you guys are encouraging just when y'all show up. Y'all made me hunger even more at the Christ to see people like y'all, because y'all are hungry. Y'all are here every week, faithful, hungry for the word of God. That blesses me, because God sent y'all to me. He said it's going to have some people for me. See, everybody be looking at, oh, I got this amount of followers. I got this amount of followers. I don't care nothing about the thousands, all the thousands of followers. All I care about the people that hungry, hung out the Christ. And y'all are here every week hungry for God. It could be anywhere in the world. And y'all right here on the TikTok Live getting some Bible study. See how God always come through. I'm going to send you some people. I'm going to send you some people that love me. He said that because I asked him to. When he sent me, he said, you're going to teach. I wasn't concerned about those thousands of followers. I was happy because it gave me a chance to go live. It gave me access to a lot more people, to meet more people. But I said, God, send me the people that you have called to salvation. Send me those people. Because I don't want to be dealing with a bunch of people that's playing with you. I want people that you have sent to salvation that are getting false teaching. Those people are not getting the truth. I ask you to send me those that you have called to salvation that is serious about your wall. And you guys are the same people that come here every week. Every week. Same thing happens. Yep. Hey, Jaya. Every week. He sent me the same people. See how God answered your prayers? Yep. Every week, hungry, want to live right. And the most of y'all, I talk to you guys outside of this. Y'all guys want God because I ask God to send y'all here. There's a lot of people that say they say they love God, but they don't want that word. You can't get where you need to be without this word. You have this, this word is what's going to train you up. These stories train you up. This is what trains you up to righteousness. This is what help you live holy. This word. Listen to these people's stories. See what they were. It's like, oh, no, I ain't going to do that. Oh, so they were tripping like this. So, no, I don't want to deal with Oh, I know I'm going to have to deal with somebody like this. So, I'm going to handle it like Paul did it. Oh, I'm going to do like what Jesus did. This is how you, this is what trains you to righteousness. 
And if you're not hungry for that, then you're not hungry for righteousness. And you guys are hungry for righteousness. Y'all here faithful. Yeah, you were with unbelievers all day. Oh, I know. That's one of the reasons why I came out of the, That's why I'm just, you know, glad I'm just a private duty nurse. I do miss working in the clinics, though. But you have to deal with so many people that's not saved. That, I'm telling you, working with a bunch of unsaved individuals will test your gangster. Do you hear me? But now, I think if I was to go back into a clinic setting, I'd be fine. I'm not a baby in Christ anymore. People can't get under my skin. You <laughs> say, yo. <laughs> yeah, it will. It will. It will. It test your gangster. But when you grow, none of them, them things, them people won't affect you at all. They come to you the next time and be like, big girl, you know what? I'm going to pray for you. Because you call them this and I'm not even getting hostile with you. That, 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 I'm going to tell you something. That silent, that being, um, if arguing with somebody, going back and forth with somebody, and you coming like that, oh, that's going to tick them off even more. You know, I'm going to pray for you because, um, I wasn't even trying to get you to this point. If, if I offended you somehow, I apologize. They're going to be like, you... I mean, it's all good, though, you know, because, I mean, I'm just saying, you know. I know, but I wasn't trying to argue with you. I was just trying to play. I mean, okay. We, that's, see, that's what they mean by the love covers a multitude of sin. You come like that. That right there, instead of you reacting to somebody calling you this and calling you that, when you react like that, that's going to calm them down. And then they're going to be like, you know what? You ain't even have to. They're going to they're gonna change their whole attitude. Because, because if you give them the same attitude, this is going to be a bunch of, that's going to, you done gave the devil his way. You done, come on, Satan, come on in. Take a seat. That's what you just did. But when you come with that godly way, when they come in with that, that, um, yep, a soft answer. They come at you ugly, but you come with soft, and then you apologetic. I wasn't trying to offend you. I didn't want, even though that's, that's pushing your pride aside. That's teaching you to get rid of that pride because that was hard for me. Like, I ain't finna humble myself for you. You done call me that you about to get the business. But that's but you but you you got to get rid of that pride. If you choose to cuss that person out, that's pride. Pride can't inherit the kingdom. Your mind will he tell us to be. Our mind should be focused on the kingdom. And if you're gonna roll with that pride, you ain't focused on the kingdom. You focus on your flesh. So as much as it hurt when somebody go in on you and you got to come back, you got that mind on the kingdom. What if you was cussing them out and the rapture came? Oh, I know you ain't calling me, though. I bet you I uh, You be like, oh, oh, see, I don't, mm. Yeah, I got to wait for the tribulation. Yeah. See, so you don't want to get caught in that. <laughs> you know, so this is why Jesus tells us that when he come back, you need to be working. You need to be doing something for him. You don't want to get caught up in no mess and in that, in that trumpet blow. You know? Mm-mm, see, I ain't got time for them to laugh at it. Be gentle and kind. Hold up, let me gonna go on this be gentle and kind thing. <laughs> that scripture? Be gentle and kind? It's for, for our people. We need to be gentle and kind with our people. Sometimes those sinners make you get them in, and you ain't got to re- resort to name calls. You know, because remember, in Matthew 23, Jesus was not gentle or kind to the Pharisees. You hypocrites, you brother vipers, y'all blah, 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 y'all do this and that. And y'all, he, it was exclamation points. Go read the scripture, exclamation points. He won't, he won't gentle or kind. We're supposed to be gentle and kind to our brothers and sisters. But to be, but when you, when you dinner, but, but we're supposed to, be um, angry but sin not when it comes to other people too so that gentle and kind thing you know we supposed to fight for the faith we supposed to um, uh, defend the faith sometimes you ain't gonna be gentle you know sometimes you ain't gonna be gentle Long as you don't go to call, you about to. Long as you don't be like, see, you look dumb, ignorant, but you don't see. That's when you done went out of the will of God. Cause now you done went into the scripture and let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. 
You know, when Jesus called them hypocrites, vipers, it was the truth. They were hypocrites. They were brother, brother vipers. It ain't like he was lying. He didn't slander them. He was telling the truth. Yep, Jesus said, I'm not coming to bring peace. So yes, we be gentle and kind with our family, our brothers and sisters. You know, that's one of the things I like about Taja. Let me share something with Taja, because I'm gonna make sure this help you guys. It's gonna bless you. Let me share something about Taja. Taja will be one of these type of um, this one of the things I love about her. Cause she a baby in Christ. But you know, I've known Taja longer than probably anybody in here. And I've watched growth in her. But one thing that stood that stood about her is that if Taja, if you have a relationship with Taja, right? Where she may she may send you a good um a wake up call every morning, give you an encouraged word. This is your relationship with her. Then you may have a relationship with her where she may send you a, a text message every day. And then you may have a relationship with her where she may just send you some crazy videos where you just laugh. And this is every day with Taja. Every day. This is what you expect. Now, oh, I'm going to get my morning call from Taja. Oh, I'm going to get my text. Oh, I'm going to get my video. This is what you're going to get from Taja. This is her every day. Say, for instance, this is your relationship with her every day. If you sin against Taja, or she sin against you, you know, the Bible tells us to talk to that person and, you know, and, um, they have an altar against your brother that you're supposed to talk. She sins against you, you sin against her, y'all have this conversation, the apologies come, she asks for forgiveness and she forgives you. When that's over, she goes right back. Morning call, text message, videos, it never change. She's consistent. It never change. But some people, even though you had that conversation and you've apologized and you made your apologies, that person still gets distant. You don't get the call, no response, no video, no nothing. How do you change? I thought we fixed it. Because the Bible tells us if you talk to that person and it don't get rectified, then you become distant. Then you treat that person as a Gentile or a tax collector. Not when you're supposed to have fixed it and made your apologies and asked for forgiveness. You're supposed to go back to your regular schedule program. So if she is, oh, that's one thing about Tyler, she's consistent. Even though you sin against you, you might have upset her or she or you or she upset you. When you talk and forgive, she goes right back to her regular schedule program. She don't have no feelings. Because you know why? Because she know pride can't enter the kingdom. She know unforgiveness can't enter the kingdom. And she ain't trying to be walking in that. So she go right back to norm. That's love. But we have a lot of women today that will still be in their feelings. Why? Because they still have unforgiveness in their heart and there's still pride there. Because if it wasn't still unforgiveness or pride there, then you should have been able to go right back to your regular scheduled program. If it was true love there. Because if you can't do that, now you're looking like the person should be perfect. Like you can't forgive you. How can you not? You were just, yesterday you were just sending a text message to each other. You had a conversation. You had a disagreement. You go, you apologize. You forgave. You go back to your regular schedule program. Why are you still distant? You're not following the word. You shouldn't be beefing. It shouldn't be an issue with you. You still shouldn't be harboring something. Because you're still harboring something. So when that, when that happens, because a lot of us probably our experiences have been there. If that happens... Then you have to pray for that person. You don't have to go back and talk to that person and say, why is you still tripping? You don't. You have done your part. You've had the conversation. You're asking forgiveness. That person has an issue within them. And how you know it's pride? Because one of the things they're going to do is come up with every excuse in the world why they have not sent you your, your morning call, why they haven't sent you their video, why they haven't sent you the text. Why? We just You just sent it to me the other day. They'll start saying, oh, I got a lot going on. Oh, I got so So all of a sudden, you got a lot going on. You just, we just had this money, so we had this conversation. Now you got a lot going on. Immediately after we had the conversation, this is where you deserve me, got to step up. That's a lie. You do got a lot going on. You got a lot of pride in you. You still got unforgiveness in your heart. And so we have to pray for those people because they're still dealing with some things where that person is still, um, well, you have, you you know, you grown, you know, we going back to the regular schedule program. You still got, harbor, you harboring stuff. 
Because if you weren't harboring stuff, then you should have been able to jump right back after we had this conversation to, our, to what we always been doing. So in that case, you got to let the person deal with them. But you got to still walk in love. Why? Because you don't have an issue. They do. So you got to pray for them. Why? Because that's your brother. That's your sister. You still pray for them. And you know what else? When they finally get through, when they finally realize, they finally give it to God, say, God, I got an issue with pride. God, I'm still not forgiven. When they get broken free, they're going to come back to you. And what you do, you welcome them with open arms. They come to you like, I know, I was tripping. I was lying when I said I had like going on. What it really was, like, that's okay, I know. Come here. You give them their hug. But why? Because that's what God does to us. That's what he do to us. We'll sit up here and be in our sin. They ain't paying no mind. Somebody trying to tell you that you're living in there. You're doing this wrong. You don't want to hear. You ain't going there. You ain't going there. You just ignore. But see, God ain't going to force you. You know you're wrong. He ain't going to force it on you. He ain't going to try to say what's going on because you know you're wrong. He just going to lay back and let you dig a deeper hole for yourself. And when you when you realize that you're in the wrong and you come to God, I was wrong. Lord, forgive me. That's okay. I know. Come here. That's what God going to do. And we got to be the exact same way. And that's one of that's why I want to share this with Tasha, cause I, cause I witness that with her all the time. You know, I witness people do her wrong. I witness her do somebody wrong, and I witness her apologize, and I witness her go right back to normal. Harbor nothing in her heart. She's consistent for her love, and I'm see, and I'm glad it helped you, Andrea. To God be the glory. That's why I wanted to share this. I was moved to share this. And I, I really do pray it blesses y'all. Yep, amen, Ashley. Because we, we got to get to the kingdom. You can't put your pride, you can't be sitting up there with this pride and then come up with, and then try to mask it. You know, you try to mask it. I got this, I, I know I got this, I got this. It's just how convenient how you managed to get it after we had a conversation. How you manage it, all of a sudden you got a lot going on. That's pride. You're trying to hide it. You're trying to mask it. Get that deliverance. Get that deliverance. And we're going to pray for you that you get that deliverance. You don't act like them. When they still tripping, don't be like, well, since she tripping, I'm a trip. Well, since he tripping, I'm a trip. No, you don't do that. You continue being that same person you are because love covers a multitude of sin. You still walk in that love. You still treat that person like they ain't doing nothing wrong because that's their issue. You trying to get to the kingdom. They're hindering themselves right now. But you pray for them because they're so because you love them. You don't want them to hinder themselves from getting to the kingdom. So when their prayer get answered and they come to, I was right here waiting for you, boo. Pray all is well. Now let's get back to this um wake up call thing. Let's get back to these text messages. Let's get back to these funny videos. Let's get back to that. Is that like it never happened? That's how we're supposed to be with each other. So I'm glad it did help a couple people. We got to do better by it. We got to do better with each other, y'all. We're, we're supposed to be sharpen each other. We need each other to survive. And we got too much beefing. We got too much attitude. We got two people that are not really rooted. We let people get under our skin. We, we got to do better. We got to grow. And if you know you're weak in these areas, go give it to God. God is not going to let you ponder in sin. The reason why people are pondering in their sin is because they don't give it to God. They don't trust God. They think God deliverance is limited. You know? They don't trust God. Oh, well, I don't think God will help me in this area, so I'm just gonna have to deal with it. Give it to God. That's that's your way of showing that your mind is on the kingdom. You don't want God, you don't want nothing that ain't of God in your life. You don't want no behavior that's not of God. You don't want none of that. And if you're serious about it, give it to God. Trust me, I'm somebody who knows what it's like to give something to God. Lay all that. God don't care. Ain't nothing too big for God. You lay everything to God. Look, God, I don't like this about myself. Give it to God. I got 
about you. But if you're still harboring on things, if you're still having an issue with that, you ain't get you ain't get it to God. You like it. You like being in that. You like being in that bondage. You, you like it. You ain't trying to give it to God. My God made it easy for you to give it to him. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. So you think he lying when he said he's going to make sure you holy, but you're going to be holding on to your little fleshy lifestyle. You still want to hold on to that sin. I like being mad at I can't stand her anyway. I mean, deep down, I ain't. Li- you want that. And then when judgment time come, you wonder why he said, depart from me. But I was doing this. I was doing that. No, I told you that unforgiveness can't enter the kingdom. I told you to forgive because I forgave you. I told you pride can't enter the kingdom. That was the very first sin committed. You hold on to it. You think you finna get up in here with me? You ain't even let me cleanse you. That's right, Taja. And God stay mad at us. Yeah, we be all messed up. Lord, forgive me all. I'm still mad about that. You be really messed up. <laughs> You'll be really messed up. But God, mm-mm, come. Take a little prayer. So if God ain't like that towards us, we can't be like that towards people. Yep. I be torn up inside. He did that to me. But God, uh-uh. Uh, Michael, turn me up. <laughs> Michael, turn me up. She praying and cut the music up, you know? Mm-mm. I don't want that with me, so no. I want to be obedient, Lord. Tell me what I need to do. <laughs> Bitch, I forgot. I just say that. Michael, turn me up. <laughs> yeah. And that's what it means by we have to, we are we are created in the image of him. That's what it means by being a follower of Christ. You know, that's what we're supposed to follow. That is what we're supposed to imitate. And a lot of us are not imitating. A lot of us are picking certain things we want to imitate like Christ. We're supposed to imitate everything that he did. Everything that he taught us. Everything in this Bible that he has laid out for us to follow, we're supposed to imitate. We're supposed to apply these things to our life. We can't pick and choose what we want to apply to our life. We can't sit up here and do things, live in some type of sin, and try to mask it or have some excuse for it. We need to be set free from it. for I am holy. Always remember that. If you know what you're doing is not holy, then you're not being holy because he is holy. So let this be a lesson for you guys on tonight. Strive to be holy. And the only way that you can be ye holy is by allowing God to cleanse you. And for God to cleanse you, you have to acknowledge that you are sinning. You have to acknowledge there's some areas in your life that you're still sinning. A lot of us are not, you know, like the like the 12 commandments, uh, most of us are following that to a T. But there's some little things that we got going on that God does, is not pleased with that we still might be doing. There's stuff that hasn't got exposed. There's stuff that's getting exposed and we ain't ready to let go. Then you give it to God. You putting your full trust in God. You give it to him. Yes, God, to cleanse me. And this don't look right, God. I know you don't like this. I know you said in your word that you don't like this. I saw in the story of so-and-so where you, how you reacted when they did this. I still got this in me, Lord. I need you to cleanse. You think he ain't going to do that? God loves that. Because he told us to trust in him with all of our heart. Love him with all of our heart. And you're depending solely on him to change you. You're not depending on yourself. Oh, I got to change. Oh, I'm going to try to work on my attitude. No, you didn't try that. You said, God, I got an issue with my attitude. God, I got an issue with this. And I need you. And if it's something he don't agree with, he's going to fix it. One, because you gave it to him. You obeyed the word by putting your full trust in him. And he gave you a promise that he would cleanse you of all unrighteousness when you confess the sins to him. So he ain't going to break a promise. You ain't never seen God break a promise. But a lot of us ain't, ain't going to God about that. A lot of us just like holding on to it. Pride. So if you know you got a little pride in your heart, you know this is, um, it's okay. Go to God. Go to God about it. Let God help you through it. Let God cleanse you. 
so you can grow, so you can mature. Because even when God has called us for a purpose, sometimes we can't go into that prayer. We not we can't fulfill that purpose until you are where you need to be in Christ. That's how it was with the disciples. That's how it was with Paul. That's how it was with everybody. God is not going to use you to live that purpose that he has called you for until you are where you need to be in Christ. Why? Because how can you tell somebody um, about getting a speck out of the eye and you ain't got the log out of yours? How are you going to teach somebody about faith and you don't even have faith? How are you going to teach somebody that pride goes before destruction and you're still walking in pride? That's why a lot of people are teaching out of the will of God. They're still dealing with stuff and then they're going to be called out. This is what Jesus meant by when he said that um, judge not for you be judged. Why? Because if you're telling people that you don't pride as a sin, somebody, well, then you wasn't up here tripping on old girl won't even um, accept her apology. See, they done called you out. You judge and they judge you by that same judgment. That's what he meant by that. How you gonna sit up here and tell somebody they can, you know, they doing wrong and you still doing wrong? That's what he mean by be um don't judge when you be judged. You're gonna be judged by that same thing. That's why you know you're out of the will of God. You can't teach somebody on something that you have not been through and have not grown out of. That's just crazy. Every, every apostle, every disciple that he had chosen, they was where they needed to be in him before he even sent them out. They could teach on everything because they already experienced it. They already done grew from it. They had wisdom from it so they could teach it. We have too many people out of the will of God teaching on something. Yeah, you got to be faithful. You God calls you to be faithful to your wife and you out here having an affair on your wife. Two different, two, three. God ain't call you. Get some ones tonight. God ain't bit more call you to preach. And you out here cheating. That's why you see stuff on TV where the husband, gun, the preacher done cheat on his wife or the wife done lay because God ain't call you. To, God ain't call you. If God is the one that cleanses you and then he calls you to teach or calls you to be a pastor, there is no way you're going to do something like that. you saying that's the best God can do? Oh, I'm going to call the preacher. You out here cheating. Or you out here uh, uh, at parties and stuff. So you saying that's the best God can do. That's what God going to send you. But you ain't seen none of these disciples, none of these apostles, none of these people that God chose slip up. You didn't see them do nothing that, that outrageous. So they may do some little minor stuff when, when Paul was saying that, you know, I knew I was doing all kinds of covenants when I knew about covenant. You see him realize that he, he, what he do? He confessed some sins, God cleansed him. That's the lifestyle that they had. You ain't see them go out there doing all that crazy mess. You ain't read that Peter messed up and cheated on his wife, got caught cheating with his wife, but he can't. Because God ain't going to have that in your heart if he's calling you to do a work for him like that. How he going to call you to do something like that when he said in the Bible that um, get the log out of your own eye. Before, so you can see clearly get the speck out of your brother. So if God is the one that cleanses you and he's going to teach you, then he teaches you this. So he's going to put in your heart and do exactly the opposite of what the Bible says. And he's the ones that put us in line with the Bible. It's not God's character. That's, that's you choosing to be out of the will of God. And because you're out of the will of God, you're not completely delivered from your sin. And so now you're performing these sins in your walk. Because you moved ahead of the game. You out here preaching when you shouldn't be preaching. You out here teaching when you shouldn't be teaching. And you still got issues in your own heart. Because you're out of the will of God. When you're, when you're in the will of God, you're not um, going to be doing these little simple things. Your mind is going to be focused on God. Your mind is going to be focused on doing what needs to be done. Why? Because God put it there. Remember? He took away your heart of stone and gave you a heart of flesh. And put a new spirit within you. His spirit don't go out here doing this crazy stuff. And if you didn't see it in the Bible with the people that he chose, why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Because most likely you're moving out of the will of God. And it's not to say that if God calls you to teach or God calls you to be a pastor, if, if, if some of these pastors of God probably did call, but they out of the will of God. They didn't wait until God fully cleansed them of all of their issues. 
they went ahead of the game and started preaching, or they went ahead of the game and started teaching because they done got hungry, they know some of this word, they know a lot of this word, but you still got issues, and you know what's going to end up happening? You're going to get caught up in that issue, and it's going to, and it's going to expose you, because the only way you're going to be cleansed if your sin is exposed. This is going to end up happening, and you're going to get what you deserve. That's what happened to me. Moving out of the will of God, I'm teaching something I shouldn't be teaching. I still had little issues that I had. I had issues with me. I'm out here trying to teach a word. I got exposed. I got exposed. Got someone to sit down. Okay, God, let's start this thing up. Yeah, get someone to sit down and be my student and do what I actually do the first. What I actually do the first time that you want to win, I then you know move out of the game. Sometimes you gotta learn. William, thank you. So I'm a corner friend. <laughs> corner friends are different from a circle friend. <laughs> thank you, love. I don't know what a corner friend is, but I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, well, y'all done made us go past, past my curfew. <laughs> I done made y'all go past y'all curfew. Mary's still here. You know, you got people, you know, yeah. Mary got them babies. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh, I don't want to do with you. You know, Mary ain't here. Okay, Mary said that. She got them babies. Taz, you still here? Taz should be all work by now. Say we need amen. Amen. To God be the glory. See, they go, they go Taz will agree to play. My baby probably sleep. It's 942. She probably went. We probably went all past her. Uh, I don't know. She could be woke. Cause I've been sleeping all day. I know. If she pop up in here, it's, I'm going to look and see if it's raining. Because that little girl goes to bed. She ain't got time to be playing with people. Yeah, I need to be going to bed. And she, she ain't been feeling 100%. So... Yep, she didn't respond. She, 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 she down, she down for the count. Hey, man. Yeah, we all, we all needed to, um, he just blessed all of us. And, um, I, I really do pray that you guys take what I said in heed. Um, seek first the kingdom. <laughs> Talking about sleepover. <laughs> um, seek first the kingdom. And, and, and seeking, you know, and that's what seeking first the kingdom is. Striving to be holy. If you're striving to be holy, you're seeking the kingdom. Why? Because that's where it's holy, in the kingdom. So you seek to live holy. You don't let anything that doesn't please God stay in your hearts, stay in your minds, and stay in your lifestyle. And if you know it's there, it's okay. We're in the flesh. Take it to God. But what's not okay if you stay in it because it ain't God that's keeping you in it it's you choosing to be in it because he gave you he opened the door for you to lay it on the altar take advantage take advantage of it um, he cleansed you know take advantage of God you know I know I would be you know, you got to take advantage of him. <laughs> I mean, he said he going to do it. So I'm going to get to him. Yeah, you know, he liked to show off. He liked to show off. You know, God is a big show off. You know, he's a big show off. I mean, look what he did with the Holy Spirit with a bunch of these uneducated people. He a show off. Watch out this Holy Spirit working, Stephen. Watch out this Holy Spirit working, my disciple. Watch out this Holy Spirit working, Janie. You know? Big show off. So, let him show off. Let him show off in your life. Yeah. That's what I'm, I'm going to give my t-shirt to say that. God is a big show off. Because <laughs> God is a big show off. He can do that. So let him show off in your life. Alright, I try. That dude wants to believe. 
Oh, he probably see something out there. Because he downstairs. He's downstairs, so. He, look at, he probably in the window. You know, people aren't allowed to move around here. Probably somebody getting out the car. I heard a car door shut, so. He don't let nothing get past him. He don't let nothing get past him. I mean, one time he was barking so loud. Because when he, the louder he get, that means somebody is close to the window or somewhere in the yard. So he get to her and get that and the fool. I'm like, okay, what's out there? Open up that one. There's a deal sitting right there. I'm talking about the big one with the with all the antlers right there in the yard. Bro, I wish you would come out here. This I ain't looking at um jazz. So I looked out the window. I'm like, whoa! That's why he was barking like he was crazy. Then one time it was a hawk on the porch, and I'm talking that thing was huge. She was on the table right there, boom, my dog to come out here. Come on out here. Come on out here so I can take you with me. And my daughter pulled up on that hawk. She sent us a video of I was like, oh, no, see, that hawk can have a house, you know. Get him the deed, because we ain't dealing with hawks, you know. He was sitting right on our porch on the hollow table, looking right at the window for my dog. My dog barking at me, looking like, yeah, come on out here. Come on. My daughter pulled up. She said, mom, what kind of bird is that? We know, I ain't know what it was. I was like, oh, is it an eagle? No, there ain't no eagle. That thing was huge. And then I said, let my friends say that word. And they was like, that's a hawk. I was all saying, we don't do a hawks. No, um, baby, stay in the car. Let the, let the hawk have the house. You know, we'll try to see if we can work something out later. But man, that that boy just is right now. As long as he ain't getting to my dog, you know. So she sat right there in the car. <laughs> Until he decided to fly off. And the fact that my dog kept barking at him, he wasn't trying to go nowhere. He was like, come on out here. Come on out here. My dog just a barking at him. So he just sitting on the table. Just... I was like, Jazzy to shut up so he can fly off. So my child can get in the house. You know? So he be on it. He... I got him a hoodie that says security on it. <laughs> I did get him a little security hoodie because he do have like security around him. I was like, get that dog, to, get that hawk to deed. He, that, this house is his right now. We ain't gonna, we ain't gonna put up a fight. You want the porch? You want, you want us to leave you some seeds or something to eat on? Cause you can have this little spot right now. Cause we ain't going up against you. <laughs> we can't do that. My dog is very cautious too. He barks at everything, but he is cautious. We, we be, we be tripping on him cause he don't be playing. If he even look like. Somebody come over here. Like, he don't like being outside by himself. Don't put him outside. If I if I let him walk outside, leave the door open. Be standing at the door because he be looking back. You, are you good? Yeah. Don't go nowhere. Because he know birds and hawks be flying around. They snatch him up. He little. So he ain't about that life. That's why he preferred to be on the leash. My dog was extremely smart. And one day we walked out. <laughs> one day we walked outside and it was an owl sitting on this green post. And we both stopped like this. Because he was so close. You know, it wasn't like he was up in there. He was right there on this close post by my car. And and Jess was ahead of me on the leash. And we both stopped at the same time. And he looked back at me. And I, looked, and I said, oh, you ain't got to look back at me. And he took off before me. Well, let's head back to the house. We'll go out later. I'm like, dude, so you just going to leave me? Like, so if the hope, so the little hour came. That's how we do but it's the way he stopped We stopped at the same time He was in front of me So he didn't know I stopped But we stopped at the same time And he looked at the aisle I looked at him And he looked back at me I said you ain't got to tell me twice He pew Let his head back I ran me and Went right back in the house Like we'll go out later It was so fun I was like dude That So what if the owl would attack me Was you going to bite Was you going to try to help me Was you just going to dip on me You was ahead of me in the leash How'd you get back ahead of me in the house it was so funny. Well, I, I said I hate I didn't get that on video, his reaction. I hate I didn't get that on video, but that was that was hilarious. <laughs> Alright. So let's pray this out. I'm gonna go ahead on the pray this out since it's late. Chapters 16 through 18. Yeah, 16 through 18. So, 
yeah, y'all got to study this time because most likely it's going to probably be a test. It's going to be a test on Sunday. It will be a test on Sunday, so be ready. So, if you got to go back and look at the older videos, the old Bible studies on there dealing with Acts, go ahead, but it will be a test on Sunday. Okay, y'all be ready. See, I ain't doing no pop quiz. I'm letting you know ahead of time since we are halfway through. We can do the test. I wish I'd have said something earlier, because some people probably already gone, but uh um They both study anyway, so Yeah no, it's a test. Alright? Alright you guys, let's pray out. Lord, we thank you. We thank you once again for an amazing Bible study. We thank you again for us assembling together. Us enjoying each other's company, Lord God. We just thank you. We just thank you for the peace that you bring into this Bible study, the love that we have developed. We thank you, Lord God, for the sisterhood that we have created because of you. We thank you for putting this together. We thank you for everyone that's been consistent, that has desired to seek righteousness, desire to learn your word, desire, Lord God, for the correction and understanding. We just thank you for that, Lord God. We thank you for being the amazing God that you are. We thank you, Lord God, for that. You are the one that changes us. You are the one that cleanses, cleanses of all unrighteousness. And we're grateful. We're grateful that you chose us to be set apart. We are truly grateful, Lord. And we just, there are no words that can explain how much that we love you. And how much that we thank you for everything that you have done. We thank you, Lord God, for this teaching on tonight. And we pray that everything that we have read and everything that we have learned that we can apply to our life. We thank you, Lord God, for encouraging one another, for just you encouraging us in you. We just, we're just truly grateful that you are an amazing God. There are no words that can, that can express. There are not, no, no hugs that, that can express. But we do want to express how much we're truly grateful for the choice you made by choosing us to do work in your purpose. And Lord God, we just ask you that you continue to equip us that you will train us up for that purpose, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We ask, Lord God, that you deliver us from everything that could be getting in the way of our purpose, anything that could be hindering us from moving forward, anything that could be hindering us from growth. If there's things in us that, that we have been harboring, we ask, Lord God, that you reveal it to us, that you expose it so that we can seek forgiveness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can seek deliverance. And we thank you in advance for it. We know, Lord God, that sin could not dwell in, in the kingdom. And we thank you, Lord God, that you are making us aware of it. So if there's anything right now that we may have, we ask, Lord God, that you deliver us right now. If we're harboring anger, if we're harboring pride, if we're harboring anything, we ask right now for your deliverance, for your cleansing. We want to keep our mind on the kingdom, just like you told us in your word. And we ask, Lord God, that you put us down. We ask, Lord God, that you prep us. We ask, Lord God, that in the workplace, Lord God, that you keep us equipped with love and humility. We ask, Lord God, that we let no one get under our skin. We ask, Lord God, that we don't step out of your character. In the name of Jesus. And we ask, Lord God, that you give us the heart to pray for those who persecute us. Pray for those who slander us. And we ask, Lord God, that you allow us to mean it with our hearts because we know in your word that you said that we're supposed to love our enemies and although it's hard for us to do it we thank you for understanding it lord god but we we thank you that we can trust in you that you can put us in that place to do to do just that and we give you the honor for it so lord god we thank you again and we pray for sweet sleep on tonight and for those that are on their way home those that are driving we ask for traveling mercies lord god we ask you to block any plans of the enemy to try to kill, steal, or destroy us because we know that he don't like the people that we're becoming. And we thank you for your protection. And we give you all the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everyone. All right, my beautiful women. It's, I, I thought Shelly done dipped out on us. I don't know why I be thinking that. Shelly ain't going nowhere. Shelly loves some Jesus. <laughs> All right, beautiful women. I enjoyed you guys. I love each and every one of you. 
and I will see you guys on Sunday and be ready for the test. You guys have a great night. Love you.